LSU is the best story in college football, Todd. Back in 2002, they say that they're going to move up from Division One to, Div to from Division Two to Division One, and here we go. Over a decade later, and they've won 25 straight games three straight FCS championship games and knocking off FBS teams left and right, including last week against Iowa State. And they have a new head coach, Chris Kleiman. Five years in a row, they've knocked off That's a right. Division One program and done it in grand style. Let's show you how it gets done. And they do it by way to the ground with two punishing fullbacks and John Crockett in the backfield. Yeah, the running back, John Crockett, the senior from Minneapolis, six foot, 250 pounds he had 138 yards last week 17 carries three touchdowns including an 80 yarder who broke the back of Iowa State on the defensive side of the football a four-year starter a safety with a nasty streak number 35 Kristen Dudzik well he is amazing 5'10 190 pounds he is a torpedo speed strength quickness he'll knock your head off great coverage great athlete he's very important on special teams but we'll keep an eye on him I'm not sure we'll see him on special teams today let's take a look at the other side of the football in Weber State also under new direction they like to run the football as well number 25 Zach Smith a career high against the Arizona State Sun Devils a physical running back and an impressive sophomore a few more years left of football after this season did a great job last week with a 60-yard touchdown run he's from Kissimmee Florida well, the two-deep roster for Weber State only has five seniors on it. They rely on youth, and number 44 in the middle at linebacker, Emmett Tella, certainly provides that. Wow, a true freshman. One of the best, if not the best linebacker in the state of Utah last year in high school football. Comes in as a true freshman last week against Arizona State and leads the team in tackles with 11. North Dakota State looks to continue their role. It has certainly been amazing. Weber State looking for their sixth and seven home openers. We got the kickoff, and it's coming up next right here on Altitude. Utah Stewart Stadium, the night of tonight's matchup. Number one, North Dakota State, the Bison, taking on Weber State. An absolutely picture-perfect afternoon for these two football teams to do battle. Weber State looking for their first victory of the season. There's North Dakota State's head coach, Chris Lyman. His first year and his first victory came against Iowa State. Pretty special as they continue their role of knocking off big time programs. For Weber State, head coach Jay Hill also in his first year. Not as much luck on the road at Arizona State, but today is a new day and North Dakota State comes in presenting all kinds of problems. Back deep for Weber State, who will receive Bo Bolin, if that name sounds familiar to those of you in Colorado, it should be from Aurora, Colorado, and one of the team captains. Won a state championship with Grandview High School seven years ago, went on a mission, was a red shirt, and he's back for his senior year here. North Dakota State has uh, been off to a bit of a slow start in their last game. This one into the end zone and deep, and Weber State will bring it out to the 25, and that's where they will do business. Well, this is huge right now. The sun's going down. A lot of people here in Ogden have heard a lot about North Dakota State, as has all the college football fans across the country. This first possession is big. Officials discussing right now, Blake, there may have been a flag on the field to start things off. Let's see what they have to say. The goal. Uh, it's a big start to this one. A personal foul against Weber State. That will back them up half the distance. They'll essentially start this drive at the 12 and a half yard line. Pulling the trigger will be Billy Green. He is a transfer from BYU. As a matter of fact, they have eight players that transferred to Weber State this year for head coach Jay Hill. Let's go defense. Four down linemen. Pressure will come early. Weber State gives off a little bit of a dipsy do to start with. And Green goes up top, and he's got the reception and coming down on it, the 40-yard line. Unbelievable grab by Cameron Livingston, number 81. And Weber State gets this thing off with a big-time play. If you're playing the number one team in the country, you have to have a lot of tricks up your sleeve. Livingston, what a catch on this and a great delivery from Green, 
Just a post route, stretch it out. The sophomore from Ocala, Florida. What a huge play. Five catches, 40 yards last week at ASU. It will be two wide receivers at the top of the screen to give to the middle to Smith up the gut. He'll gain two and a half, maybe three yards on that carry. When North Dakota State brought that pressure early on, and despite the penalty early on in this game, the first play of this game, they strike long and they say, you know what, what the heck, we have to come in here with confidence into our home field, into our home stadium against one of the best in the country in all of college football. Second down, seven yards to go. Twins to the right. Smith, play action, gonna throw the football again, a bit of a rush on. He goes to the outside, and that is Bowling. Bo Bowling with the reception. He's gonna be really close to the first down, Blake. It might be a third and short. Well, trying to make North Dakota State run, you have Flo going one way and then coming back to right and dumping it off to Bowling, who is a very good athlete and a good blocker. Let's take a look at this Weber State offense and the key players to make this machine go. They had some success late against Arizona State. And one of those, of course, number 11, Billy Smith, the transfer quarterback. And you saw, uh, that is Billy Green, make that throw to start this game off. Shaden Kehano, number one, is another huge player for Weber State. Yeah, and they're gonna call a timeout here because they're about to run out of time. There was a uh, miscommunication problem getting the play in on that for the Wildcats, but what a start for them. They'd like to keep this tempo and flow going, but they had to be sure right there, call the timeout and make sure everyone is on the same page against this incredibly talented defense from North Dakota State. Six starters return on the nation's number one scoring defense. Seven of the top nine tacklers have returned for the Bison. All right, set to go here. Weber State back facing a third and let's call it a half a yard. Zach Smith in the backfield. Fullback as well, Bo Bolin from Aurora, Colorado. Billy Green under center, second back through with Smith. He's met at the 30 yard line and I think he's gonna be short, Blake. Wow, that defensive line and just the Bison's tenacity up front. You're gonna have to bring it tonight against them. And it's gonna be fourth down and you're gonna see the pressure. These guys just take on the blocks. You see Kyle Emanuel is an outstanding athlete. The right end coming in there, but there are three or four guys just mixing it up. Emanuel, the senior from Nebraska, seven and a half sacks last season. All right, big moment right here for Weber State. Green under center, facing a fourth and a half yard. They're gonna go wide. And coming close, and boy, I don't think he's got it. From here, it looks like North Dakota State has stopped them. Weber State decides to go wide, and I don't think Zach Smith got there. They stretched out a little there, and wow, look at the pursuit. We talked about this in the pregame with Dudzik. Those guys just getting it done. Emmanuel there once again. I mean, this is North Dakota State football the past five years, really. Just outstanding. Well, the one thing you saw there is pursuit. It looked like there was an opening, and it closed rather quickly. All right, this Bison offense takes the field. Carson Wentz, the six-foot-six quarterback, leads the way. First and ten at the 30-yard line. 12:45 left in the first. Hand off to John Crockett's got some room up to the 35 to the 36-yard line. Gain of six on first and ten. Well, gap responsibility is so important against North Dakota State if you're the defense from Weber State. I mean, you have to play honest. Everyone has their assignments, and they're gonna find a way. As you take a look at the quarterback, a great story, Carson Wentz. Well, he's replacing former quarterback Brock Jensen, who was, what, 40, 47 and five at, at North Dakota State. But this quarterback, six foot six, he's got all the tools, he can run the football. We saw it a week ago. Wentz in the shotgun, nobody in the backfield. Throw out to the flat to one of the fullbacks, and Bonnet with the reception up to the 42-yard line, make it the 41, that'll be a first down for the Bison. On the preseason all-conference team, he's 6'3", 250 pounds, senior, just another physical Bison. Offensive key players for the Bison, boy. You look at John Crockett, Carson Wentz, Zach Braw, a wide receiver that went over 1,000 yards a year ago. 
Single set in the backfield for Carson Wentz. Three wide receivers set, two at the bottom of your screen, one up top. Change the play at the line of scrimmage. That may be too much time and a flag. I was waiting for the snap to come. It, it really uncharacteristic of a North Dakota State team. And, you know, we talked about how good they are, Blake. You get there that good by winning on the road. Now, Carson Wentz, the defense that he's going to have to take a look at on the other side of the line of scrimmage. They're led by really a freshman. Yeah, and on that play right there, they have man on both corners. And... He thought he was all set and didn't feel comfortable with it, but as you said, it's just really uncharacteristic. However, he did have a little fumbled snap in the second play of the game last week. All right, first and 15 for Wentz. Wentz gonna keep it himself, picks up a block, but he's caught in the backfield. A tremendous play, number 57, Jake Gallegos. We saw him before practice yesterday, fired up for this football game. Well, he transferred from Utah State in the offseason. Eight transfers from S FBS programs here at Weber State. He did some great things last week and today already playing extremely well. That's a great play. Keep it at second and 15 for the Bison of North Dakota State. 25 consecutive victories. Boy, it's, it's amazing when you sit there and think about it. Wentz back to pass, has some time, time's collapsed, and he goes over the middle. And this one coughed up by Morlock. Did he have it in time? No, they're calling it incomplete. The Chase Morlock, oh, another incomplete. one that comes in and spells Crockett, drops that football, sets up a third Breaks and long. Well, that one was close. Sure was. You'll see it here on this replay. Uh, it looks like Whoa. he had possession Made of a it. football move. But go with what the officials say on this one and really impressed with Wentz last week. 6'6", six, six, stands in that pocket Yeah, he never strong. had it. That, that camera angle showed it perfectly. He never had it. Third and long for the Bison. Twins at the bottom of the screen. Twins up top. Wentz takes a snap. Searching, steps up in the pocket, feeling a little pressure. Directing traffic and lets go of this one. And that one will be out of bounds, and the Weber State defense comes up big on the opening drive after North Dakota State had stolen a little bit of that momentum. Wow, how about that pressure and not giving up on the play on defense? And that's what this coaching staff is just pounding into their brains from Weber State. Do not give up. They didn't give up on that play. Great coverage in the defensive backfield in the pursuit. Shaden Kehano back to receive the punt for Weber State, and he is absolutely electric. Last week against Arizona State, six receptions for 99 yards, and he got behind that defense quite a few times. High punt, Kehano waves for the fair catch and takes it in about the 11-yard line. We have 10.09 left in the first quarter. Weaver State threatens early with a 48-yard completion to Livingston, but they come away empty-handed. We're scoreless. North Dakota State and Weaver State back in a moment. Welcome back to Stewart Stadium. No score, 10.09 left in the first quarter. Weaver State will take their second possession, ironically, Blake, at about the exact same possession they had their first possession after a personal foul call to open the game. And serious history and how about North Dakota State kind of spreading out there sitting back ready to throw the football early on look at the series history North Dakota State leads this four nothing they've only met four times the last time in 2005 that in Fargo and not a popular score in the fans of Wildcat minds 41 to nothing Weaver State and Billy Green back to pass over the middle the pass is tipped and almost picked off looking for Shaden Kehano, who was targeted about a dozen times last week. Carlton Littlejohn gets his hands on that one. 6'1", 220 pounds, the senior from Minneapolis, leading tackler last year, one of the leaders on this national championship team. And I think he gets his hand on it right here. And then, boy, once again, a defense flying around. Well, head coach Jay Hill must have seen something in film that said his guys could throw the football because they've certainly come out doing that. Zach Smith with the carry this time, and that's stout. 
despise the defense. That may be one of the reasons they're throwing because this squad is absolutely dangerous against the run. Uh, they're, they're just so strong up front. And those linebackers, so experienced. They've been in so many big games, and they don't panic. We saw it last week against Iowa State. Down 14 nothing. they do not panic. You see 61 down there on defense. It's all, it starts with him, Brian Schatz, only returner on that four-man rotation on the defensive line. Third and 10 for Weber State, pinned deep in their territory. It trips to the left and then motion. Green has time, but this one collapses on him quickly. Tried to get that ball out, unable to do so. He was looking for 82 and couldn't quite get the ball to him. And that's going to be a three and out for Weber State. And it's certainly something they did not want to do is give the Bison great field position. They were able to get out of that hole early. Once again, great pressure up front. They're so strong and fast for defensive linemen. Here's the punt. Way for a fair catch. And North Dakota State will take over at the 44-yard line. C.J. Smith back to receive that kick. So the second time of the day, the Bison going on offense, looking for the first points of the game. George Stadium on a beautiful afternoon in Ogden, Utah. The Weber State Wildcats and North Dakota State Bison. No score. The Bison with their second possession of the game and their new quarterback, new this year, six foot six, Carson Wentz. Wentz, the handoff, Crockett, finding a tough going here, tries to spin away. Weaver State gang tackling here. I think Ford Progress will take him to the 43, a loss of two on the play. Little counter oh, and this is uh, what North Dakota State does so well, but the Wildcats sniff it out. Talked about gap responsibility and an excellent job of the defensive line down there uh, for the Wildcats getting it done. Connor Myers, the senior, along with uh, the defensive backs, uh, Deontay Florence, of course, along with a plethora of Wildcats. Second down, 12 yards to go. Wentz in the shotgun to give off the middle. Crockett. Up to the 48, 49 yard line. We'll call it the 49. It'll bring up a third and long, but it's manageable at six yards. Little zone read action right there. Uh, by the way, we talked about Dudzik. We did not see him returning the punt on that last punt return. He will be out there on defense, and there you see Crockett running hard. All right, third and six. Twins to the top part of your screen. Single receiver set down. Wentz in the shotgun. Wentz with time. Pockets collapsing, but he goes over the sideline. Looked like it might have bounced, but they're calling it good. 83, Kerry Woods with the reception. Boy, I'd almost want to look at that. Has the first down by three yards. I thought it bounced, Blake. And I thought they had a little rough in the passer here. Uh, there's a possibility of that, which it is on the Wildcats. So the Bison in business right now. They're trying to get a little te tempo and rhythm to their offense. Yeah, well that 15 yard flag is not gonna help out. You cannot commit penalties against North Dakota State because this is a disciplined, hard-nosed football team that will make you pay almost every single time you make a mistake. No question about that. And the Wildcats know that. Their coaching staff preaching that all week long. Cannot beat themselves in this one. I'll tell you what, the Bison absolutely destroyed Iowa State last year. They took their will away, and that's what they do with so many of the football teams. Bonnet was in motion. Oh, fake give up the middle. Bonnet in the flat, makes the catch down to the 20, down to the 15, inside the 15. We'll call it the 14 and a half yard line. First down, Bison. Oh, their running game is such a threat, and it's so important. Little mesh right there in the play action, dump it off. All these guys are good receivers coming out of the backfield or your tight ends and, rec and uh, receivers on this team. I mean, it's just, it, it's extremely difficult when they're this successful running the ball. 
Boy, we talked about how good the pass quarterback Brock Jensen was. This kid at six foot six has got great feet. You saw it there on the rollout. Four wide receiver set. Wentz back to pass over the middle. Great reception by Crockett. Hard nose running down to the seven yard line. It'll be second and two yards to go. Catch the football first and then make your play. Got the little fly sweep. They were very successful with that last year. Little play action from that keeping Weber stayed honest, and then once again, dumping the ball off and Wentz doing a great job. All right, second, we'll call it three yards to go. Uh, some motion that left tight end. Came up a little bit early, and that'll make it tougher going. That'll set him back five yards. It'll make it a second down, eight yards to go, and I think that may have been on Bonnet. I think it was. 46, the offense. Half the distance to the goal. And Bonnet, I mean, a guy who will just steamroll you. Both they, these guys. They got a couple Pull of fullbacks back. that will do it for yes, North Dakota do. State. Jed Ray, Ray Sear came in and just some punishing blocks a week ago on Iowa State. And as again, I said North Dakota State just took away their will. Second down, eight yards to go for the Bison. Wentz gives the second back through. Crockett finds a little crease on the outside, hits the cone, and that'll be, oh, out of bounds at the one-yard line. Thought he got that cone, stepped out at the one, but, boy, gap starting to open. You see that line blocking, and watch how they take care of the fullback. Terrific block there. Bradshaw to the outside. Yeah, he just reads it right there, bounces it out to the left side. Great job by Crockett, experienced running back. Tough. Oh, well, I don't know I about think that's that. A touchdown. <laughs> I don't there, think his foot was out, no. and I think he broke the plane. Yeah, I think Crockett wants that one back. Will he get the payoff here? Second back through is Crockett, and he's going to dive ahead forward, and that's a touchdown. And that's the play that they ran last week against Iowa State that went 80 yards. This one only had to go one yard, and it's a touchdown for the. Bison on the road. I know it was a touchdown. Those guys, it took them a little while. Well, I don't know, okay. they got I don't know what took so long. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite sure get in. why it took so long. You know, and I'm glad that he got the score because it looked like he was in the play before, Blake. So it's nice to get that payoff when you do a lot of the hard work. The heavy lifting, so to speak, kind of like what you do. Adam Keller. Placement down, the kick is up and good by Adam Keller. So the Bison go 55 yards, seven plays in three minutes, 33 seconds. They grab the lead over Weber State. It's seven nothing, Bison. Back to Stewart Stadium, Ogden, Utah, the home of the Weber State Wildcats. And right now they're facing a seven nothing deficit. Is that man, John Crockett, got over from a yard out. To give this North Dakota State's team an early lead, something they did not enjoy a week ago, but they sure scored often after they got behind. But tonight is what they're concerned about with Weber State. Tom Barnison handling the kicking duties. Bo Bolin back deep. Bolin takes this one about four yards deep, let it bounce out of the end zone. And the Weber State Wildcats will begin at the 25-yard line. Let's take a look at how things went down on that drive. For North Dakota State, good field position. Look at Crockett. Busting in, looking like he's going to get that cone. We thought he had it, but he gets it again on the next play. Goes a yard, seven plays, 55 yards, three minutes, 37 seconds of time elapsed. Weber State came out throwing the football, Blake. You see them getting back to perhaps a little more of a run game. And just as I say that, they have a five wide receiver set. Steve Clark, the offensive coordinator, going to mix it up a little here. Now back to more traditional. Green under center, going to pass again. Over to Kehano. Kehano makes the grab at the 30, make it the 31 yard line before he's wrapped up. A gain of six on first down. Boy, Green really poised back there. You know, ASU last week, they do a great job disguising their defenses. He learned a lot in that game in the first week, and 
Doing a nice job on this play right here. You really have to pick up the blitzes and they're trying to go 60% completion rate the rest of the season if possible. Bo Bolin at fullback, one of the team captains from Aurora, Colorado. Kehano at the top of your screen to give off here to Smith. He's got a hole up near the 38, 39 yard line. That'll be a first down for the Wildcats. That is a well designed play. You have North Dakota State on their heels right here. You have a fly sweep, not sure where the ball is, and they take advantage of it right there. Excellent execution up front. Quarterbacks and the receiver. First and 10, ball marked at the 38-yard line. Billy Green setting up. Green, again, going to the air. The pocket is collapsing, gets rid of the football. But there's nobody home, that's gonna be... Boy, that looks like grounding. There's not a receiver in the same area code. Well, he's out of the tackle box there, so he's fine. Good play by Green. Boy, he was close. Way to get rid of that football because there was nobody there. So there was man, man on the outside here. Great defense and coverage by the Bison. So the defensive backfield doing their job and bringing the pressure and Green out of that box, able to throw it away. Second down, 10 yards to go. Green in the shotgun. Drew Batchelor at the bottom of your screen, twins up top. Green. Pocket claps again. He steps up. He's got a little bit of room to the 40, back to the 41 yard line. He had a lot of time to throw there, Blake, but this Bison defensive backfield, really good. Yeah, great coverage once again. And the corners and the DBs right here. Here comes the pressure. You don't have that much time. And man, you could just see the strength coming up for that. Kyle Emanuel once again, that right end. The Bison fans know all about him, one of the most popular players in their program from Nebraska, just bringing it there. Weber State with their third, third down. They've been 0-2 with the third time be the charm. Green takes the handoff and gets it first down. He had the first down. I don't know if he came back. Boy, it's going to be close. Had the first down, took a little baby step backwards, Blake. But I think he got it. Livingston with his second reception of the day. His first was the 48-yarder that got Weber State out of trouble. And the Wildcats will move the chains. Well, against this team, you're going to have to hit those slants, and you're going to have to do it quickly because the pressure is coming. Green knows it, sits in there, fires a rocket right there for the first down. Really good ball. Well, Weber State coming out, throwing the football. Green has been accurate, been able to get out of some trouble. Rub Smith tries to find a way outside, and you heard the hit up here. That was a big time hit, and Colton Hegel comes up, and I'm telling you, Smith's going to have to come off the field on that one. He took a tremendous shot, and that's what the Bison are known for. Well, Hegel's a Buck Buchanan Award nominee, 89 tackles last year, huge interception last week against Iowa State. Second down, seven yards to go. Weaver State trips up top, including Bo Bolin. Twins down below. Bolin going over the middle, and that one's going to be a pass interference all over Shaden Kehano. And that was, again, Carlton Littlejohn had a great game last week against Iowa State. Well, we'll take a look at this and see what Littlejohn does. He's good in coverage as well. Obviously wraps around right there, and they have to call it with his left arm. 10 yard penalty. Well, you got to give it up right there, Blake. The one thing you've got to do is give it up for the head coach, Jay Hill, designing a play where you've got a player like Shaden Kehano, one of the fastest players on the field, matched up with a linebacker. Well, he's been telling these guys all week long, look, they respect North Dakota State. But you cannot play afraid. And you can tell right now, this coaching staff, led by Jay Hill, first year, they're not holding back. That was the third North Dakota State penalty. Green, 4-7 for 72 yards so far in this game. 231 left in the first quarter. Weaver State down 7. That's a dangerous pass. Overshoots everybody. Trying to set up that little screen. And looking flat for down there. Yeah, looking for number 80, Drew Batchelor. Good job by North Dakota State. I mean, they have been in so many of these games, though, Todd. And panic is the key. 
do not panic for North Dakota State. Jake Kahawaii comes on, number 84. He's a tight end for Weber State. Second down, 10 yards to go. Have moved into the Bison territory. Bachelor in motion. Trips to the top of your screen. Green has time, fires over the middle. That's going to be a gain of four or five yards, and that makes it a manageable third down. We'll call it third and four. Drew Bachelor on the reception. He's a freshman from St. George, Utah. He had one catch last week, so got a little experience here. You're going to see the route. Stop. Make sure you make that catch before you try to make a play. Great job all around. Third and four for Weber State. They converted their first third down on this drive. Prior to that, they were 0-2. Five wide receivers. Over the middle again, and this one, great pass defense. Wow. C.J. Smith on the coverage, and there was just no room right now. And it's going to be a fourth down at Weber State again. Faced with the decision here, it's going to be a fourth and four, perhaps on the edge of field goal range, and it looks like they're going to go for it, Blake. By right, Smith, the junior, great job on that play. Getting his left arm in. Excellent man coverage by the Bison in that last play. Minute 47 left in the first quarter. North Dakota State with a 7-0 lead. Again, a five-wide receiver set. Weaver State has come out throwing the football. Green has some time, fires. He's got the first down. Big play, Shaden Kehano. Big play, great call. Trying to take advantage of Little John on this play. Fire it to who's open. You just need the first down. And Little John comes up, makes the tackle, but a great job by Kehano making the catch. First and 10 for Weber State, now to the traditional pro set. Smith, little dipsy do. Oh, let's make that number 31, who's got some absolute speed. And we're calling Wilkes for the touchdown around the left end, and Wilkes takes it in, and we're within an extra point of being tied up. You saw that extra gear, and this is a young back that Weaver State rotates in. The freshman from Las Vegas, 11 carries last week, 36 yards, but a touchdown here, and they've asked Bull Bolin to be a a greater blocker and block even more. He'd love to carry the ball more, but he made an important block on that one as Wilkes bounced it out to the left side. 27 yards, Wilkes' first career touchdown, and Josh Kialamakia puts the extra point through, and we're tied at seven. We talked about the two deep roster, and this is the guy that spells the starter, and Wilkes comes in and is explosive. Look at the blocking at the point of attack. Well, the block from Bolin, couldn't see it right there, number eight, but he bounces it out. Backs have to see where the space is and where the room to run is. It did a great job to see it bounce out. There's Bolin, number eight, nice job. He didn't, you know, he had some patience on that. Bounced out, got it around the outside. There wasn't an edge set and takes advantage of it. Eric Wilkes, first career touchdown. 27 yards, a little camera time for number 31. Weber State comes out, throwing the football, throwing the football, throwing. All of a sudden, you're running the football. Break one for 27 yards and a score. You got to give credit to the play calling as well as head coach Jay Hill. Oh, no question. And we talked to him about this this week, but these transfers from these FBS programs have to have really helped this program improve over the last year. You can see it right now. Fackrell with the kickoff. And Colin Fackrell boots this into the back of the end zone. Number eight, Darius Anderson was back to receive, but this one threw and it'll come out to the 25 yard line. And what was a hot afternoon is now turned into a beautiful evening with a buck 14 left in the first quarter, Blake. And we're tied at 7-7. I hope folks at Isle Tudor are enjoying this football game because settle in and enjoy. Well, that offensive line from Weber State, great job on that last drive. 11 plays, 75 yards, took off four minutes and 22 seconds. And you know what the most important thing about that drive is, Blake? 
that the Weaver State defense got to take a seat on the sidelines no because question. they're playing a physical football team that beats the snot out of most Division I teams. Play action, Wentz rolling out. He's got a receiver wide open up to the 50-yard line, and that will be a first down, and that's a freshman, R.J. Erzendowski. Oh, uh, they're really excited about this kid from Creighton Prep in Omaha. There's a little waggle in the boot, dropping it off. Great job, good catch. He ran great routes in camp. It's good physical presence as a freshman, as you said, Todd, but this has got to be exciting for him. His second game of his college career. Game 26 yards, and look at these fullbacks. They will make you pay. They're absolutely terrific. Crockett up the middle, down to the 49, down to the 45, inside the 45 to the 44-yard line on first down, a gain of five, and a flag comes in late. Crockett just pumping those legs. Dragon Martin. He's a hold of a personal foul. Dead. Hit number 54 of the offense. Got to be smarter. Second down. The officials might cut out head referee right there, but it was a personal foul. 15 yards. That will march North Dakota State back into their own territory. Right now, Carson Wentz, 5 of 7, 60 yards. Bison need to settle down a little bit. Obviously, the Wildcats getting to him. Wentz, the pride of Bismarck. Second down, 20 yards to go. Receivers to the bottom of your screen. Crockett takes the handoff and has no room. The Weaver State defense has been stout and done the job at the point of attack. And that may be it for the first quarter. Wow. We Weaver talk, State. Yeah. We talked about Emmett Teletod. A freshman is in on that play. Number 44 and... Man, very impressive. Just bringing it. They had to have watched that tape over and over and over because that was the same play that killed Iowa State last week, that 80-yard touchdown run from Crockett. Well, you see head coach Jay Hill fired up, and he should be because his Wildcats are going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the number one team in the country. And after 15 minutes of play, we are all knotted at seven. The good stuff is just left to come, folks. Oh, we're in Ogden, Utah. It's 7-7. Seven. For State, 7. The Wildcats came out throwing the football. Even up the score. Terrific run by Wilkes for 27 yards, and that gets us knotted up at 7. Big play here, 3rd and 18 for the Bison. Carson Wentz, plenty of time, steps up in the pocket. Look at that rifle over the middle, but it's picked off by Weaver State and a terrific play. Number seven, Josh Burton steps in front and picks off the Carson Wentz pass and the Wildcats are back in business. Excellent zone coverage by the Wildcats, stepping back there, coming up. Great anticipation, Burton sees it, watches his eyes, I don't even know if he saw him. No, he didn't. He didn't see him. And, you know, we talk about Wentz being 6'6 and great vision. Can see those holes in the passing lanes, but I'm not sure he saw Burton right there. But what a big play for the sophomore from Lo Roseland, Louisiana. Kevin Vaudlin was the target on that play, but Josh Burton jumped the route, comes up with a big pick, and Weaver State now has their first opportunity of the second quarter after evening things up at the end of the first. Billy Green has been active. The transfer from BYU has been razor sharp. Bo Bolin picks up the blitzer, and Shaden Cajano, so dangerous against Arizona State, pick up a 12 yards, first down Wildcats. Really stretching the field on that far side. The officials conferencing the far side of the field on the 50. An official's timeout. I don't know what they're discussing, Blake. I didn't see any laundry on the field. There's not a flag down. 
Well, we got this time, you know, you take a look at uh, North Dakota State and all new coaches, really. There's the officials. Uh, all new coaches, Blake, uh, with the exception of three. And, of course, Kleiman, who we spoke with this week, just a terrific guy. We talked, spoke to him before the game as well, taking over as head coach. Well, he was able to keep arguably the most important coach on their staff, and that's Jim Kramer, the strength and conditioning coach. Just vital to the success of this program. But confidence right now for the Weber State Wildcats. Well, first and 10 for Weber State. Second back through is Bo Bolin, and look at the Aurora native rolling and bowling himself forward. A gain of 10 and a first down. Wow. That was a physical run and plenty of room to roam here. Once again, that gap responsibility and Bolin taking advantage of it. Big play. Blake, when we talked with head coach Jay Hill, he said for this football team to be successful, Bo Bolin has to be great. And he has to be a great blocker. And when he gets his chance, he has to make big plays. Like he did there. Green, again, double clutches here. Down to the bottom of your screen. Corpus with the reception down to the 40-yard line. But guess what? Short reception, gain of two yards, but the offense is continuing to move the ball. No plays that are going for losses right now. They're getting positive yardage. They ran right into the pursuit right there. And we may see the coaching staff kind of try to expose some of the space down here, North Dakota State, because there was some. And let's remind um, that number 35, Dudzik, not completely healthy on this night. Green, back to pass again. The quick one, Livingston tried to turn up field too quick and dropped the football. He was wide open. Well, we just talked about it. Have to make the catch first, and that's what they've done so far tonight. You get excited. You're playing the number one team in the nation. And all the hype that comes into this, and the sophomore from Ocala ah. just doesn't see it in. And we've got an injury on the field, one of the very good offensive linemen from Weber State, I believe it's A.J. Wilcox, the yeah. left tackle. Yeah, left tackle's down at the 46-yard line as the officials and the trainers tend to him. We'll take a break. 13-24 left in the second. It's 7-7. The loss that is. Let's get back to live action. Third down, eight yards to go. Green back, and he's absolutely snowed under. And coming in, making a terrific play. Number 53 on defense. Kyle Emanuel, he happened to be the player of the week for the conference. Oh, Emanuel's amazing, but you talk about the left tackle. Justin Turner got beat. They moved him over to left. After Wilcox comes off the field, and it turned out to be a big deal on that play right there. The left tackle getting beat by Emanuel. Weber State forced to punt and taking their time. This one. A great punt, hits inside the five and down at the nine yard line. And when we get this opportunity, Blake, this is a straight, great story. And we're gonna use your namesake. This is Blake O'Neill. And let's tell the story of what the coach did. He comes from Australia and the coach took a 30 hour recruiting trip. Now he got some help out from Utah. Utah has an all conference punter that's from Australia. Got a hold of him, got onto a plane and went down and met Blake O'Neill has never played college football or American football for that matter. And last week against Arizona State, it was his first ever game punting the football. And now he has his down inside the 10 yard line. Pretty good stuff. All right, North Dakota State cranks up the offense again. Carson Wentz, the handoff here to Crockett. Boy, it doesn't look like much, and it's a gain of five yards. As, no, as we told you, it, they'll, they'll get nasty in the trenches. That's their bread and butter right there, and they'll be happy with that, believe you me. And you get five yards on a play like that. That's big for North Dakota State right now. The Weber State defense has got a little bit of a rest the last couple possessions as they were able to keep the North Dakota State offense off the field but this is a unit that can certainly get it done. Wentz under center, Twins up top, receiver down low. He's gonna go to the bottom part of your screen and terrific coverage by Weber State. 
Well, once again, man coverage by the corners. And they are extremely confident so far early in this game. And that's a great job. That's a great job, man coverage by uh, Taryn Johnson, the freshman from Sacramento. All fired up and ready to go. Eleven fifty-seven to go. Big third and five here. Game tied up at seven. Bison inside of their own 15-yard line. Quarterback draw. We told you the six-foot-six quarterback can run the football, and he does it right. That you think he had everything figured out, and he tucks it up the middle and gets, I don't know, six yards. Yeah, he can run the football, and he can also dive for first downs. He is an excellent athlete. Wentz is just a phenomenal athlete, and. Coach was telling us earlier this week that at times they would have loved to have used him in linebacker. That's how good of an athlete he, he is. And he was a backup quarterback for the great Brock Jets in the past three years. At least two years, that is. Bison with the first down. Knows the football almost to the 21-yard line. Play clock ticking down. Wentz tosses it up. Has a receiver out there, and it's Zachra. What a catch. They're going to call interference here. That's going to be on the defense. Defensive pass intervention. Let's wait and see what they say, but Braw made a terrific catch. Wow. What a catch. Great ball, by the way. But look at his thumbs down. <laughs> Catches that, it with his hands, not that, his body. Now to climb that one to interference, but Braw, my goodness. So much we can talk about with Rob, but the la last year, 15 touchdowns, third in the nation in FCS, ranks number six in North Dakota State's all-time receiving board with 121 before the season. Gain of 27 yards on North Dakota State out of the shadow of their goal line, now threatening out to their 48-yard line. Wentz, second back through, that's Chase Pro that is, uh, Chase Morlock, Morlock stacked up. Didn't have much running room there. Well, Weaver State doing a great job because I'm thinking they're watching tape this week and telling themselves, look, we have to stop this counter roll or we don't have a chance. And they're doing a great job. The A gaps right there, inside run, following the fullback and Crockett. 10.42 left in the second quarter. We're tied up at seven. Carson Wentz faced with a second and eight. Gets a play action, rolls out right. Dumps this one off mid-range and a catch made by number three, Gebhard, and that's a first down for North Dakota State. Gebhard comes from Sioux Falls, South Dakota, a hotbed for recruiting for North Dakota State. They have to compete with South Dakota State, South Dakota, and the great ones from Sioux Falls seem to go to Nebraska, so you're competing with some great players from that area, and you see a good little route and great concentration right there. Gain of 13, first and 10. Boy, I love that play call because as he rolled out, he had a receiver short, mid-range, and long. Blake, it really set up well for Wentz. Play action, he's looking deep. Wentz goes over the middle, things open up for him, and a great catch made by Kerry Woods, and that'll be a first down. Sophomore from Bemidji. Great job, good route, but Wentz, well, you can't say enough about him. His vision and just his poise back there after the nice play action. You have to respect that. Stands back there. Great time for Wentz. Letting it fly. Gain of 23 yards for North Dakota State. So as they got out of their goal line, they've taken to the air, and Wentz razor sharp. And but I tell you, when you look at guys that are six foot six, Blake, he's got tremendous feet. Spreads the field again here. Four wide receivers set. Wentz searching, looking, tucking the ball away, trying to get back up to the line of scrimmage. He may have lost a yard. Good pressure by the Wildcats. Bring it, you'll see. From all sides here. Wow. And the effort, just tenacity there by the defensive lineman. Wentz, 8 for 12, 121 yards. He does have the one pick on a tremendous play by Burton, who broke on the ball for Weaver State. And yeah, zone coverage on that play two plays ago. We'll see what happens here. 
Crockett, second back through. Just keeps powering. Gang tackling by Weaver State, doing a great job because if Crockett gets to that second level, he could be gone. Terrific job there. That's right. You have to be disciplined if your defense uh, from Weaver State. Just take a look at Jake Gallegos. He's a sophomore. Once again, that transfer from an FBS program, Utah State, bringing plenty of competition to every position here in Ogden. Third and nine, play of the drive for North Dakota State. We're able to get out of the shadow of their goal line. They've moved down the field largely on the arm of Carson Wentz. Wentz has time, steps up in the pocket. He's so dangerous, tries to roll out here, throws the football, and this one picked off again, throwing across his body, tried to force that one a little bit, and Deontay LaFlorence picks that off. Big time play by the DBs. Great man coverage, locking up. Frustrating Wentz here, the pressure coming from Obiowa and he should not obviously have thrown that ball. Trying to make something happen and forcing it in there. Big time play for the Wildcats. It's tied 7-7 in the second. Wow, Zach Braun looking for Zach Braun, another INT for Weaver. Welcome back to Ogden, Utah. The hometown fans pretty happy taking on the top ranked team in the country and it's 7-7. Second quarter, 7.53 left. Blake, so far we've seen a lot of things. We've seen the Weaver State Wildcats go to the air, something they must have seen on film that they could throw the football. We saw Shady Kehano get open last week. I think he's got a couple receptions already. Now, North Dakota State, so very adapted, both running and the football. And this is some of the growing pains Carson Wentz is going to have, Blake. On that play, he's rolling out right, and he's trying to make something out of nothing, throwing across his body and very few quarterbacks can do that. He'll learn as he goes on. Well, you see the turnovers right there, North Dakota State with two, but Wentz obviously not happy with himself after that throw, just trying to make a play. It's gonna be second down. We had one short run during that commercial break. Second down, eight yards to go. Play action. Green rolls out, gets rid of this one. North Dakota State starting to get wise to that play. Yeah, Ambrosius is a really, really good defensive lineman. The right end coming in there, the pressure from Wisconsin, one of the really talented student athletes uh, from North Dakota State from Wisconsin. And he understands the defense, played extremely well. As you take a look at Grant Morgan right there, Played extremely well last week against Iowa State. Weber State just one of five on third down conversions. This is a big one. They played well. They've gotten a couple turnovers. If they can keep the chains moving here and not give the ball back to North Dakota State, obviously that would bode well. Green. Pocket collapses. Ball comes out. It's free. It's picked up. Little John hit the three into the end zone. Touchdown. Kyle Emanuel with the huge hit. And that is what North Dakota State fans are used to seeing on defense. Big plays, causing turnovers. You see Jay Hill just trying to keep his team, keep their heads right after that play, but Emanuel comes in strong. And you know what, Blake? Let's go back to it. It's that left tackle position where they're coming from on no that left side of the line, and we saw the starter go out. A.J. Wilcox. And that's a tough thing. When you when you came, out, came in there and you're trying to protect your quarterback on the blind side, it's going to be a very difficult thing to do. Adam Keller puts this one up and through, and the North Dakota State buys it with a great defensive play, forced the fumble, and Little John scoops it up and goes. But again, Weber State has been in this game, forced two turnovers. It shows the importance of the offensive line, Blake. And when you shuffle things like that, what an experienced defense can do. Well, the Wildcats were pinned back there, and this experienced uh, defense, as you mentioned, Todd, knows that they have to bring it right there. Left tackle uh, with some issues for Weber State, and they took advantage of it. They did. You're exactly right. And they pinned their ears back and created the turnover. You can chalk that one up for just tenacity. 
from North Dakota State and the Bison. Well, it, it, if you're sitting there as a Wildcat fan, you may be looking at the TV saying, okay, let's just let's run the football and maybe punt and get out of the shadow of our own end zone. But the one thing we've seen against this Bison football team, you cannot be conservative, Blake. If you're conservative, they will hammer you into the ground. Well, you saw little John on the bench right there. Man, this guy has been so important to this football program in Fargo. And they talk about those who stay will become champions and will be champions at North Dakota State. And these guys have worked hard, dedicated themselves to the program, and it pays off with big plays like that. Barnison will kick off, puts the toe into this one. Bo Boland's going to have to run over. That one bounces in the end zone and out. So we'll come out to the 25-yard line, and that's where Weaver State will set up shop and give it a go. Now trailing 14-7. And a beautiful evening, about a quarter of the field, bast in sunlight, and that could present some problems for, for a little bit of the defense, I would think, Blake. Yeah, and we're going to take a look at this offensive line. Keep an eye on the tackle, the left tackle once again. As we said, Wilcox goes out. And boy, Weber State with so much confidence earlier in this game, right now reeling if they don't figure it out on the offensive line. Back to the ground and a nice opening, but it closes quickly. And we saw Wilkes with that nice 27 yard touchdown run, the first of his career earlier to get Weber State on the board. Here he is again. Wow, look at this pursuit. Set the edge and then Little John he just runs through people, the speed and just the toughness of this defense, impressive. Yeah, it looks like that run's going to go for five or six yards. Their closing speed is absolutely great. 6.56 left in the second quarter, 14-7 in favor of the number one team in the country and the defending three-time champions. Weber State finding a little business and a little bit of room up the gut here. Going to be about a yard short of the first down. Again, it's Wilkes who's doing the heavy lifting here. Yeah, nice job by the right side of the offensive line. Boy, they needed that third and one. This would be really big for Weber State. They can keep this drive going here. Well, we've seen what North Dakota State can do. That offense can put points on the board very quickly. The defense did it last time, and that's the difference of the game at 14-7. Third and one. Billy Green, number 11, the transfer from BYU with the controls for Weber State. Third and one. Quick hitter out to Kehano. Kehano tried to get up to the 35-yard line, Blake. He's not even going to be close. That was such a great defensive play. My goodness, by the Bison and Travis Beck. Incredible game last week. He played every snap despite having knee surgery last week. Coming up here, wow. And you see just sniffing it out, the little screen right there. Dudzik is there. Travis Beck had knee surgery three weeks ago. Three weeks. And played last week. Unbelievable. And man, the entire game. Fourth and one, no gain on the play. O'Neill back in punt formation. O'Neill gets this one off. Bit of a line drive kick, but deep. Bounces right at the 12-yard line and dies. So I would say that the trip down under was a pretty good deal <laughs> for the head coach, the Jay Hill. Trip. He's been a weapon so far. 30 hours, he better start. 5-10 <laughs> left in the second. 14-7, the defending champs on top. Ball game and it has been here. Carson Wentz gets picked here by Josh Burton and then again by Florence rolling out, going the opposite way and getting picked there. And then here's the touchdown to give it a 14 7 lead for the Bison as Little John takes it in. And we're back to live action and a great slice back by Crockett, but three hard earned yards up to the 15 yard line. And dare I say, Blake, this is a huge, huge defensive moment. Felix Woods and the Wildcats coming in with speed on that one. Lake City, Florida. That flex linebacker. 
Nice job by Weber State right there as you look at the turnovers. Weber State wants to win this turnover battle. That's a goal. Twins up top as well as the bottom of your screen. Single back. Wentz in the shotgun. Six foot six, taking over. Wentz with time. Rolls out. Look at the speed. He knows he has it. Look at him dip back inside. He's going to be very close to the first down. And he might have it. A nice job by Wentz. He had a receiver going over the middle into zone coverage. Didn't have anything there. He wouldn't bite on that. So he says, hey, it's not there. I'm going to get out for a big game. And a, that's a big play for the Bison right yeah, now. Yeah, Dustin Martin just couldn't catch up with him. He, he had him in his sights, but couldn't quite get him. Follow the fullback at third and one. Third and inches, didn't quite get the first down. Wentz is six foot six and see what he does. Follow the fullback. Oh, Crockett. Rips off a gain of four and a half. That'll be a first down up to the 27 yard line. Well, once again, that lead blocker for North Dakota State, Sear, oh, 242 pounds of strength from Minnesota. And they're able to recruit these big bodies who are strong, good on their feet, great blockers. Great example on that play. Crockett single back, twins up top. Bonnet is the H-back, we've got motion. Crockett takes the handoff, dipsy dues outside of the 30, look out, 35, 40. This one's coming back. Flag right about the 37 yard line, Blake, as Crockett bolted to the outside and broke containment. But I think uh, the Bison are gonna be called for a hold and this one's coming back. Well, that's great for the coaching staff next to us from Weber State, because that's a great piece of running by Crockett. Just causing problems. Pounds it inside, able to bounce it out. He's just such an intelligent, intelligent running back with great vision. And he can cut on a dime when he has to. Well, I can tell you one thing about Chris Kleiman. He's not going to like the fact that his team has had five penalties in this opening half of play. And that one was a big penalty. You take away a huge gain. First down, you keep the momentum rolling with three minutes left of the second quarter. Now you're pinned inside your 20-yard line, 20 line at the 19, facing a first and 20. Twins to the bottom of your screen, single receiver up top. Crockett in the backfield. Crockett takes the handoff, great block. But the Weber State defense is doing a terrific job against the team that usually grounds and pounds. Yeah, we haven't even talked about that offensive line yet from North Dakota State. They played seven offensive linemen last week, and that's what they're going to do probably until they get in to the Missouri Valley Football Conference play. But, man, if you can work on that offensive line like that and play disciplined football like Weber State, great job. Physical football up front. Second down, 16 yards to go. Twins up top, twins at the bottom of your screen. We got motion. Little screen pass out here to Crockett. Can he pick up a block? No, but he picks up a move up to the 30 yard line to the 31 yard line. And now we've got a third down and six, six and a half yards to go. It's manageable. You saw that fly sweep action on that play. Weber State has called a timeout, Blake, with a minute 49 left. Just a 30 second timeout, 30 second timeout for Weber State. This is a big down because the North Dakota State offense is explosive. Like we've talked about their run game. We saw it go for 80 yards. If you're Weber State here, there's a minute 49 left in this first half. You've done some unconventional things here. You're, you're in the game. This is a big play. It is, yeah, it's huge for them. And the problem is North Dakota State can do three or four things right here. Absolutely. You know you can run the ball, but you have that guy, Carson Wentz, who can stand back there in the pocket. And he knows that he's going to have to really look it over here as he comes up to the line of scrimmage, I would imagine. All right, let's call it seven yards. Let's call it seven yards, 37. That's minute zone. 49 left before we have halftime. Zone deep in corners in man. The Bison, 25 consecutive victories. Beat Iowa State last week. Big down here. Wentz holds on to it, goes over the middle, and gets the first down. And he went to his fullback. They make that tight end. Kevin Vaudlin, for the first time we've called his name tonight. 
his sixth season after an injury in 2010. Eight touchdowns last year, third in the Missouri Valley Football Conference, but this is just a smart play. You have the zone from the safeties out back, and then in the backfield, defensive backfield, you have the corners and man, and just a smart play dumping it off there for the first down. Wentz, 10 of 15, 138 yards. The only thing on a stat sheet that bothers him are those two picks. Wentz, with time, sets, nobody open, gonna run. Weaver State closes in, but look how big this quarterback is. His lumbers and gains six yards. That's right, you tip over and you're, <laughs> you're gonna have a nice game. And a nice job by Wentz right there, but you know, really good pursuit actually and pressure by the Wildcats. Jay Hill, the head coach for Weber State, has talked to his team this week all about his experience at the University of Utah and the 2009 Sugar Bowl when Utah went in and just beat the tar out of Alabama and saying, you know what, we could do that too against the number one team in the nation. All right, a minute 28 left. Wentz, five carries, 16 yards. A couple of them have been critical. All right, pregame with Ron Zapolo. Every Sunday morning from 8 to 10, get caught up on all the NFL action. He'll be joined by Carl Mecklenburg, Mark Jackson. Get all your NFL insight with Ron Zapolo on altitude, 8 to 10 a.m. on Sundays. Right now, North Dakota State and a fake up the middle to Crockett. And Wentz keeps the football. Let's mark it down to the 47-yard line. Zone read by Wentz there. They'll run that, I don't know, maybe four or five times a game, but he reads the end and keeps it. Another huge third down. Time ticking down. Just over a minute to play. Oh, and he's hit right when he lets go of the ball. And a terrific play by the Weber State defense. McKay Murphy, number 90, the son of the great Dale Murphy, making the hit on that play and keeps Weber State in this game before halftime and forces the Bison to punt. Another transfer from FBS, Utah. Getting back up. My goodness. 290 pounds. Missed a little bit of a cut block. It looked like Crockett missed that cut block. Fair catch called for and taken at the 17-yard line by Shaden Kehano. Actually, make that, check that. That yeah, was Shaden Kehano. 59 seconds, just under a minute to play. Now, we've seen Weaver State open up this game, throwing the football. You've got to be careful. You've got a new left tackle in. They've shuffled the line a little bit. Well, North Dakota State obviously is going to keep everything in front of them here. Pursuit is going to be key. And as you've talked about already, Todd, an experienced defense, they know what's going to happen here as they get into the zone defense. Green fires over, completion made, goes to the tight end over the middle. Dudzik on the ground. Kamana Kamiakawa makes that grab over the middle. Not sure, that is a tough football yeah. player right there. I don't know. You talked about Dudzik and the thigh strain, the quad strain he had coming into this game. That's why we've not seen him returning punts whatsoever. And if this guy comes off for a play, well, he has to because the trainers came out, but this guy is tough. Well, I think he has shoulders, right shoulder maybe, his elbow. He's holding his arm there. How about Kamana Kamiakawa? I didn't think I was going to be able to say his name. He was hurt, didn't think he was going to play tonight. We were told he wasn't going to play. He's out there on the field, gets a reception, good for six yards at second down and four. Kamaniakawa. Got to get those names. Got to get them right, play. You have to get them. Yeah, I was. I was glad that he got it on the football field because he's the first name that I memorized. All right, trying to keep everything in front of him here. Deep is the deepest for the Bison. And Weber State trying to get in the field goal position. Yeah, timeouts left. Weber State only has one. Clock's ticking down. 45 seconds. They go to the draw play, but the Bison did not bite, and they put the hammer down quickly. Sometimes you can rip off some yards on that when you have a defense spreading out back there. No luck on that one. Great job by the Bison. 
with 24 seconds, they may. Yeah, I, I think at this point in time, yeah, Blake, with, with a third and six, you got to be careful here. Let's go ahead and let's get to the locker room. Down seven against yep. the defending three-time national champions and call it a day, right? Absolutely. Here's the snap of the pitch. And Wilkes up to the 27-yard line. You see North Dakota State continuing to try to pull that football out. Why not? Good one. Boy, they're a tough football team. 14-7 in favor of the Bison. Blake, you saw Weaver State kind of get away from the running game, opened up throwing the passing, and did a great job. I thought they did a tremendous job at kind of keeping the Bison on their heels. But the Bison, true to form, tough. They converted some third downs. They're able to get some first downs and get moving a little bit. And right now, we got a football game at 14-7. North Dakota State, the three-time defending champions, continuing to roll up victories right now ahead. Let's all go down to Chris Kleiman, the North Dakota State head coach. And coach, got to be happy with how your team's performed. Carson's going to have some growing pains uh, going with this. A couple of picks. Yeah, we didn't uh, we didn't manage the football very well in the red zone. Obviously, we'd have had three more points, but uh, give Weber State credit. They're playing extremely hard. Uh, they've got good football players, and we're in a dogfight. Coach, you see the quarterback for Weber State able to throw the football. Billy Green has found some nice holes for you in front of you guys. You're, you're tough to throw the football on. He's had a little bit of success. Absolutely. They've had a lot of success against us, and, and we've got to shore up some of our issues in the coverage part. But uh, we've got 30 minutes of football left, and let's see what we can do. Coach, appreciate your time. Get into halftime right now. Your squad Thanks. up 14 7. But in Ogden, Utah, the Weaver State Wildcats have won five of their last six at home. They're looking pretty strong. Billy Green's got his team in it. It's 14 7 in favor of the three time champs. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome to the Proceed Halftime Report. I'm Beth Poole, and back this year for another year is former Bison linebacker and All-American Sean Fredericks. At the half, it's 14-7 NDSU with the lead. Sean, your, your initial reaction here. Well, Weber came out to play. They have a great game plan. Uh, their defensive line is putting a lot of pressure on Carson. Carson's going to have some growing pains. we got to work through that. Um, but overall, I think 14-7, 14, 14 Weber feels great. We don't feel so good, but I think coming back, we're gonna, we'll still take control. I think it was safe to say that beating Iowa State, getting that fifth consecutive FBS win, that caught everybody's attention. It certainly seemed to catch Weber State's attention. They've picked up on that run game. They have John Crockett's number. They do. You know, uh, again, they're throwing some nice fronts at us defensively. Um, I give their coaches a, a great deal of credit. They've just come out with a great game plan on both sides of the ball. They're coming after John heavily. Um, I guess I'm going to be curious to see if our Rams can come out second half, get a rotation going, and, and start running the ball. I think Tim's done a nice job trying to get Carson some easy throws. I want to see us establish the line of scrimmage and start running the football. Well, we're going to take a break right now, but we'll be back to take a look at some highlights and break down this first half of Bison football. Welcome back to the Proceed Halftime Report. Time now for everybody's favorite time of the Halftime Report. That'd be the Proceed interview. I'm joined with Kyle Fody. Good to see you again, sir, for another year of Bison football. You know, I know last year we talked about the Right Choice program over there at Proceed. Are, are you guys still doing that program? Yeah, we're still doing the Right Choice program. It's going to be a little different this year. This year we're giving away Yeti coolers. Um, last year we did the DeWalt tool set. This year Yeti coolers, kind of something cool and new that's coming out. Uh, we're giving away... A 45 quart cooler, a 35 quart cooler, and a 20 quart cooler. Kind of something for everyone. It's it's pretty cool. I know you guys stay busy over there at Proceed. I've been hearing a lot about weed control. Are you guys doing more with that? And you know, what's the progress like? Well, weed control is very important. Um, it's been a big problem around our area for sure. And the big thing is the Liberty Link program. And a lot of guys are going to go to the Liberty Link soybeans. And Proceed has very good varieties to to help you guys out. Uh, a couple of them are the 21 00s, 1151s, both really good IDC and both really good soybean cyst nematode resistant. Well, I know just like football, there's never an off season at Proceed. I know you guys stay busy. I'm sure you're getting right into the swing of things right now in the fall. We look forward to talking to you guys more throughout this Bison football season. Yeah, you too, thanks. All right, thank you very much. We'll have more on the Proceed Halftime Report after this.
Welcome back to your Pro Seed Halftime Report. We take a break now from talking about the game to talk about how they got here. After five straight FBS wins and four years of playoff football, it's clear the Bison are well conditioned. But I asked strength and conditioning coach Jim Kramer this week how they prepare for these challenges. All right, second group up. Here we go. Step up quick. Let's go. Efficient. Ready. Drop the hips. Go. We didn't do anything special the week of it. You know, little things, some things with the diet, but even that, that base was laid when those players were young and, and coaching them on nutrition, teaching them about nutrition. You need to stay sharp on some of that stuff. One, to stay healthy. Two, to stay fast. It's not uh, what you just see the week of the game or at that time. But one thing you do see that at that time is the heart that these kids have and these players have. Feet up underneath the bar a bit more, get your hips. There you go. Good, good. The kids know how important it is to get in the weight room and stay strong, get in the weight room and, and be in condition. And the young kids know how important it is for their development over those four or five years to try to get to that next level with that. Let's go. Take your time. Good, solid technique. And I've always said it in recruiting talks and, and, and that is that, you know, we get a lot of times we get the athlete that's not as big and fast and, and, and strong to compete at the next level. And those athletes come here with a burning desire to, you know, someday show someone, hey, yes, I am. I've, I've developed. I'm a late bloomer. I've developed into a, a bigger and stronger athlete. So um, I think that motivates a lot of them throughout their careers. You hear about a lot of them talk. You hear a lot of them talk about it. Let's go. Move that ball with some speed. There's an opportunity for a, a leader to step up, you know, and nurture that opportunity. There's no one superstar. There's no one person that really. It's a it's a, a group of people working together, from players to coaches, and that what's that's what makes a program. Once you break that ball off the block, move it with some speed. That's changed a bit. We had some tough years in there where we learned how important leadership was. We learned how important the team was. Let's go. We got to move. And that's what's changed, and I think that's, you know, as much as the physical part, you want to point to that, there's that part of that team atmosphere, that team chemistry um, that is responsible for doing what we've done. Slow at first, explode past the thigh. That's it, good. I think a lot of the, the, the pride they got was, they think it's all, everybody thinks it's all done. And this group is probably hungrier than any other group. It's in season, so we're sixes. There's, there's a lot of hungry kids there that want to, Okay, I'm not just going to be happy being a part of a national championship program. I want to make my mark. Hold posture now. This base was set a long time before our national championships. This passing down the leadership from group to group of these players and how to lead one another, how to motivate one another. Good job. Call it pressure if you want, but it's an opportunity uh, for us. I think it's a good fit here. Five, nine, three, one, two, three, one. Bison obviously in good shape and well conditioned, but this is the time where you start to see how conditioned they are and whether or not it'll it'll make the difference here in the second half. Well, um, we've been a second half team for the last four years. You know, I'd, I would have liked to have seen us get off to a better start, but I think we'll come out and we'll show our conditioning again up in that altitude, and I think we'll get the running game going. I think our defensive line will uh, outlast our offensive line. I do. Sometimes I start to wonder if it's really the Bison are really that well conditioned that well conditioned or if they're just that much more conditioned than their opponent and I feel like you'll start to see that wear down especially against uh, Weber State here. Well I, I do see them rotating still and uh, even though we're a little bit short on the defensive line we're getting that rotation going. Uh, Kyle Emanuel I mean you look at that guy that guy's just a beast um, so I don't think you would even have to but I think our defensive line is so well conditioned that they're just going to take over. Um, I am still confident. I think people in Fargo who are hoping for a 50 to nothing blowout are probably a little worried right now. I thought maybe it'd be a little closer, and, and it is, and so, so it goes. But uh, I think second half will come out, and we'll take control. And we'll see about that. We're going to uh, hit a break here right now, but we'll be back with plenty more of your Proceed Halftime Report. Welcome back. Let's take a look at our first half stats brought to you by the North Dakota Certified Seed Producers. Taking a look here at the stat report, a uh, big one for the Bison rushing yards right now. They are leading Weber State 68 to 56 in rushing as well as in passing 138 to 99. You talked about uh, Tim trying to get Carson comfortable with that passing game. It's He's producing in it, just maybe not quite what Bison fans are used to. Yeah, I think the two the two biggest stats that I'm concerned about right now are the penalties and the turnovers. You know, I, I the, the biggest gains you're supposed to make in a football season are from week one to week two. You're supposed to make your biggest improvements in that in that first uh, that first week. 
I've seen a lot of mistakes the first half. We can still live with those. You know, the offense is still getting getting to know each other, and, and Carson's getting getting used to everything, and and that's understandable. But we need to get better. We need to eliminate those mistakes. We need to eliminate the turnovers. We need to eliminate the penalties. They're, they're just killing us right now. And if we we can't get the ball, uh, we can't start running the ball better. Um, then we can't turn the ball over when we're throwing it. Are those penalties coming from NDSU making mistakes, or Weber State being a formidable opponent? You think? Well, I think Weber's. It's playing very aggressively, and so we've gotten a couple holds, and uh, that happens when they're um, when they're getting as much pressure as they are, and so I think our offensive line is probably getting a little bit frustrated. Um, so I mean, I, yeah, I give Weber State a lot of credit for how hard they are pursuing us, and um, used, usually we're used to seeing our defensive line getting that kind of penetration. We're not getting the tackles for loss that I think we need at this point. They're getting they're getting yards on almost every play, and we need some tackles for loss. Um, Kyle Emanuel has made the two biggest plays of the game, I think, uh, with his two sacks. The sack after the, the interception that stopped their drive, that was a big play and obviously the one for the touchdown. But uh, we need more consistent play from our defensive line and we need to stop them for no yards on first down. Well, and on third down, NDSU has actually stopped them for, they've only, it, Weber State has only converted on one third down. Uh, so they've, they've, held them but but not quite to the extent that they that we need them to of course we'll have plenty of more uh coming up after this break with your proceed halftime report welcome back to the proceed halftime report taking a look now second half we're moments away from from that getting underway out in ogden utah what do the bison need to do how do they get that distance maybe everybody's expecting them to have in this well we've talked an awful lot about coach kramer and our conditioning so far let's see if we can put it into effect and implement it we got to establish the line of scrimmage offensively and we're just not getting enough yardage on that first down defensively as well i think we need to establish a line of scrimmage all right well we're heading back out to ogden utah now where the bison are underway in the second half of the 18, then scoots out of bounds at the 19-yard line, and that's where Carson Wentz and the Bison offense will take control. Once again, Dudzik usually in that spot, and they're trying to make things happen. He's on defense. We'll see how his shoulder holds up. Weber State has a dinged-up left tackle. Keep an eye on that one. Well, North Dakota State, this is about the time of the football game that they start dominating but Weber State has done a terrific job we saw the rushing numbers at halftime Blake Weber State defense has been up to the challenge but we know what kind of challenge this North Dakota State team is all right first and ten. Second back up the middle Crockett there you go gain of six their favorite play and a gain of six huge to start off the half because they're going to establish that offensive line and let Weber State know we're going to come up here, we're going to punch you in the face. Beautiful evening, Ogden, Utah. Kickoff right around 80 degrees. Things have cooled just a little bit. Sun going down. Beautiful night for football. And so far, we've got a dandy for you. Twins up top. Motion down. And it's a handoff. And the sweep coming around. More than enough for first down across the 30-yard line. And that will be number eight for the Weber State Bison, or makes that North Dakota State Bison. And number eight, Darius Anderson. We saw him on the kick return, a young kid getting an opportunity. Once again, we talked about Ryan Smith on that fly sweep last year. They were so successful with that. Coach Kleiman and his staff trying to find that guy who can make plays on that jet fly sweep. All right, the Bison come out, get a first down at the 31-yard line, first and 10. Play action. Carson rolling out. Look at the strides across his body. And a great pickup right here. Another big time first down as the Bison continue to march up and down the field. They're throwing the ball. They're passing the ball. Great job. Jeff Illies. Gain of 21 yard lines from North Dakota State. So the tight ends in this offense going deep. The third string tight end able to haul that in and pick up the first down. Nose of the football already in Weber State territory. Hand off to Crockett. Crockett dancing around at the 45, down to the 44-yard line. And in this pro set offense, that's exactly what you want to do. You want to be able to run the ball and pound it so you can run a little boot, a little waggle. Flow goes one way. 
boot to the right, dump it off as we saw in that play previous to that one. But that's what they're doing. And they can do this all night long if they want to. Nothing fancy, just pound it, then go a little boot waggle at you. Biggest play on this drive was Ilias making the reception, the third string tight end, getting the job done for North Dakota State. So dangerous. Crockett, look at the room now. Pushes across the 40, down to the 39-yard line. It'll be third in a, yeah, one and a half yards. Well, you said it right there, Todd. Look at the room. Now they're keeping Weaver State honest. You have to respect the pass and the bootleg and the power of football, ripping off four, six, five yards of carry. And taking time off the clock. They are masters at this. And Jay Hill knows it. Well, you know what? You take a look at Iowa State last week, who had number 20 Kansas State on the ropes. They were a defeated football team. The Bison completely dominated them in every category and rubbed it in their face. Crockett again, look at that cut up there. Boy, it's gonna be awfully close, and I think he got a decision to make here. I think he's gonna be about a half a yard short. Well, they're not giving any, uh, giving him any benefit of the doubt right there. I thought he Almost may have a stretched yard. over, I'm not sure, but yep, it's fourth and one, so follow the fullback if you're the defense. Keep your eyes zoned in on the fullback, because more than likely, that's where the ball's going. John Crockett, Heads to the sideline, sneak it. Morlock in the backfield. And the six foot six quarterback, I think he's got enough. We got one linesman on the far side of the field. Boy, you know what? Weber State, Weber State he has did. stopped them. He, he, he bobbled the snap there. And last week, the second play of the game, Weber State says, yeah, he, not a clean snap. He loses uh, the football. He loses right the there. football. And we saw that in the second play of the game last week. See, so trying to get a little help from his fullback. Boy, I tell you what, it, it was, it's a great job by Wentz able to corral that snap after making the initial mistake. Yeah. Well, and you know, this is, a, this is all part of starting. Second game of your career. Absolutely. He has plenty of experience as a backup, but you know, we saw that last week against Iowa State. First and 10. And I'll tell you, this North Dakota State defense right now was in the backfield. They were two yards deep meeting Zach Smith, and there was nowhere to go. We've got North Dakota State Bison down on the football field. Obvious pain. <laughs> Absolutely. But you don't see that very often as far as stopping North Dakota State on fourth down. It just doesn't happen. See now, Ashley Thornton. The uh, senior who played every snap last week against the Cyclones. Clyman well, really happy about his play last week. He is down. He's 6'3", 225 pounds from Bismarck. Another hometown hero staying put in the state, and that's a good sign as he walks off the field. MJ Stump will come in in his replacement, but look for him to get back on the field. The one trademark these Bison players have, they're all tough. Yes, they are. And Thornton's one of those guys who, hey, if you stay, you'll become a champion, and he's done that three times. Second down, 10 yards to go. Trips on top of your screen. We got twins below. Green, back to pass, has time. Over the middle, Shaden Kehano looked to have a little bit more room, but once he caught the football, didn't have much place to go. That's all concentration. And for the receivers now in the second half, the lights are on and you know it's different lighting out here. You talked about that earlier in the first half. So now you got to get used to the lights. Not that that was a, a ball that had anything to do with the lights, but it's something that you may want to think about. But you just got to concentrate, make that, make that catch when you make a play. Billy Green, 10 of 18. This is a big play because Weaver State, you got to take advantage of opportunities when they present themselves. You had a big fourth down stop. You got to find a way to convert that first down. We got motion. Kehano back to the top of your screen. Here comes North Dakota State. Kehano making a great back shoulder catch. And Billy Green put that exactly where he needed to inside the 40, down to the 39 yard line. Well, he saw something with Jordan Champion, the cornerback out here. And he is right on target here. Great ball. Excellent concentration. That's a big time play for Weber State. 
22 yards on the play. The third down conversion, I talked about it, Blake. You've got to take advantage of the Bison mistakes because they're not going to have many. Just getting by champion right there, the junior from Avondale, Arizona. Tejano, five catches, 46 yards. Weber State doing a good job through the air. Keeping the Bison defense off balance. Too much time. False starter, too much time. What do we got? <laughs> officials timeout. So. Well, we have a false. Yeah, it's a it's an officials timeout. Let's sort things out. Let's take a break. 1040 left in the third quarter. It's 14-7 in favor of North Dakota State. Weaver State on the move. All right, welcome back to Stewart Stadium. We have got a great football game for you. 10:40 left in the third, 14-7 in favor of North Dakota State, the three-time defending champs. But Weaver State doing a great job. Billy Green through the air has been absolutely terrific, and he'll stay there. Green going up top, and this one after a gain of five. Livingston Hall's in the catch. He had the 48-yard catch to start this game, Blake. Well, what's important for Weaver State right now, that offensive line, if they're going to throw the ball. And it looks like Justin Turner's made a few adjustments, doing a nice job at left tackle right now, moving over from the right tackle spot. And Shane Oliverson in the game as well, number 70. So you have 76 and 70 trying to do nice jobs at the bookends. Well, anytime you lose somebody, especially a left tackle, Blake, you've oh, got to no make question. adjustments, and it's a big, big time. And they go around the left end, but again, they go underneath, and it's Shaden Kehano. Close to the first down. I think he's about a half a yard short. Little John right there. This is a big play. And, you know, Weaver State doing a nice job. Green delivering the ball. He knows the timing. He knows the pressure. Not trying to take too much. Has North Dakota State on their heels. Doesn't happen very often. North Dakota State, by the way, going for their second consecutive victory to open the season on the road. Weber State staying on the ground. And they can't get around the end. Great defense. Zone, Great defense. Zone blocking to the left. Trying to stretch it out with Bolin. And that is great defense by Little John coming up there. The pursuit. Dudzik is there. Probably playing hurt. Shoulders probably hurting right now. This is going to be a long field goal. It is going to be a long field goal. Let's mark it. It'll be a 48-yard field goal for Weber State to try to cut this lead to 14-10. Colin Fackrell. This ball will be placed on Weber State. This is the one thing you cannot do. 65 running on the field left. They didn't have enough people, but they're letting him substitute. No, now Weber State's got to call the timeout. Yep. They, they got to call the timeout. Okay. That's right. Their second timeout of the half. Now. That's a huge point, Blake. You're 835 in, and you've burned your second time out. Yeah, that was not wise by that team. And you can see that Jay Hill Seating. is on fire. You know, looking at the wind, there's no wind. I'm talking about 48 yards of field goal. It's a beautiful night here in Ogden, as Todd talked about. So it's a good night for a field goal. Yeah, the wind is good. The conditions hey. are good. Join us on Altitude for high school football, the Colorado High School Football Game of the Week. All the action gets going September 11th when Douglas County faces off against Thunder Ridge at 7 p.m. from Shea Stadium. Altitude, your home for high school football. The officials trying to get this straight after the timeout. Weaver State spinning their second timeout. Colin Fackrell will try... 48-yard field goal. It's down and it's blocked. That one never had a chance. No, it did not. And special teams, huge for North Dakota State. As Coach Kleiman said last wow. week, they got whipped in special teams. But Thornton comes in there with a big block. We've talked about him, the senior. And Coach Kleiman wanted to win the special teams battle in this one tonight. And this helps in that category. This is what makes a great team. 
You give the opportunities to succeed. North Dakota State has now given themselves that chance. More often than not, this football team comes through in crucial situations. It's the only way possible to get to 25 wins in a row. All right, first and 10. Football at the 41-yard line. Carson Wentz back in business. 8.26 left in the third. It's 14-7. Wentz with time, goes across the middle, and it's a rare drop you'll see by Kevin Vaudlin. A good defense, but Vaudlin, from our vantage point, should have hauled that one in. Blake, Blake the one thing that you, you hope when you play a North Dakota State team is that they're just off a little. You've got to have that advantage because if they're on their game, they're nearly impossible to beat. Boy, the Weber State defense is, I can't say enough about how Weber State has played in this football game on defense. Boy, especially on that play right there. She's done a great job, and that's, that's sheer strength right there. And being dedicated and disciplined up front. Well, those big fellows, as you see them there. Every play that goes on is a big one. North Dakota State, four of nine on third downs, have a chance to go to 50%, third and seven. Big play for both teams. Crowd gets into it, Wentz in the shotgun. Going deep, this one overthrown. Great coverage by Weber State. Florence on the coverage, and he is A1 and Weber State rises to the challenge despite the blocked field goal, holds the Bison, and they'll get another opportunity. Uh, you, you don't see it right there, but Florence, as you said, great coverage, a little bit overthrown. Yeah, it's trail technique and no inside release. Did a nice job. All right, Weber State's going to have another opportunity to do something with it. Shaden Kehano. Looking for the fair catch. He's going to draw a flag. Didn't give him enough opportunity to catch that football. And Weber State's going to get improved field position. They would have been at the 15-yard line. Guess what, folks? It's going to be better. 7.27 left in the third quarter. Let's see what the call is here. Halo rule used to be called, Blake. Right. Another, you know, one of those mental mistakes Coach Kleiman talks about on special teams. Game, 15 yard penalty. Well, we, we heard the second part of it. We knew that it's 15 yards and a first down for Weber State. It's 14 7. There's 727 left in the third. Stay tuned. We got a great one for you. Back in a moment. Oh, beautiful shot. 14 7 North Dakota State, but a full moon. Strange things happen under full moon, Blake, so I'm told. Weber State starts out this drive in the 30-yard line after the personal foul, 15 yards into the flat. Livingston with the catch up to the 40-yard line, gain of 11 yards, and Green looking every bit to transfer from BYU. The eight players led by Green coming over to Weber State. This yeah, he's year. a big-time quarterback. That's a great play right there. Good protection by the offensive line. And well, as we've mentioned, left tackle, right tackle, Kind of thrown into difficult situations. First and 10, ball at the 40 yard line. Weaver State playing a tremendous football game under the direction of new head coach Jay Hill. They've won five of their last six home openers. This one into the flat. The defensive back fell down on that. That was Jordan Champion that fell down. And I, 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 I don't know if there's two receivers in the same area. Yeah, that's what happened, Blake. There's two receivers in the same area, and I think the Bison were fortunate on that simply because of the fact that champion fell down. Or a receiver was tackled on the play. There was also <laughs> there was also some intense pressure coming on that left side once again. Keep an eye on the left tackle, Justin Ta Turner. Tackled, fell down, you know, tomato, tomato. 6.54 left in the third quarter. Second down, 10 yards to go green. Feeling some pressure. Again, it's that left tackle position. And it, it's, listen, we've talked about it five or six times, but it, it bears repeating, and it shows how important those guys are in the trenches when you lose your first team tackle. 
Well, you're talking about one of the best in the country, Emmanuel coming over and wow. just bulldozing Turner on that left side and the sack. I'm sure they're very well aware of that right now, and they're going to have to adjust to it. Yeah, Blake, they're going to have to bring in an extra tight end, or they're going to have to roll Green out to the right-hand side away from that pressure. Perhaps set up a screen where you've got them coming in and try to catch them off guard because what they're doing is not working right now. Third and 16 for Weber State, putting up a tremendous fight against the Bison. Here it is, there's that screen pass, and Bolin just couldn't get to it. It was set up in green a little too strong. Boy, Turner has his hands full on that left side with Kyle Emanuel. And green can feel that pressure, and that was a huge victory for the North Dakota State defense. Past three plays. As well as Weber State has played. The problem with the Bison is giving them chance after chance. Blake O'Neill puts his foot into that. Wow. Back at the 16-yard line, all the way up to the 30. C.J. Smith out across the 35 to the 36-yard line, and the Bison will once again be in business. 5-22, left in the third quarter. The defending champs on top, 14-7. Wow, great ball game. Carson Wentz and Wentz, just his second game starting, and you're going to have some growing pains. Tremendous last week, and just a great break on the ball by Weber State's Burton here. But Wentz starting to rebound, starting to find his groove. North Dakota State picking up the first down there. You see him rolling and throwing, doing a great job. But back to live action, first down, 10 yards to go. Crockett around the end, up to the 45-47 make that right around the first down marker for North Dakota State. They make their money on the ground, they continue to do it. Oh, he just showed Wentz the reason he's successful here in the second half and playing extremely well because they're able to run the ball, as you said. Now, Weber State's done a great job in the A gap, but bouncing it outside, stretching it, Bison trying to take advantage. Second one, which is a dangerous place to be because North Dakota State can do just about anything they want to do and they usually do at this point of the game. Weber State has stood strong and taken every punch. Play action, Wentz rolling out, has all day long. He's gonna tuck it and run, pick up the first down. Excellent job by Morris Edwards. They have a face mask, I'm not sure, Blake. The flag came out late, either they hit him out of bounds. Yep. And it, you cannot help out a great team. I want to see how far he was out. It didn't look like he was that far out to me. Ball is dead. Well, that's, that's a personal. That's a shame. It is a shame, and so is his microphone. Yeah, that was it. He was going out of bounds. You got to protect these kids in college football, they, they football had of any level. Great coverage, Todd, by Morris Edwards. And then they wasted it on that play. Great job by the defensive backs. <laughs> Mistakes are magnified when you play the defending champions. First down, ball 34 yard line. Carson Wentz, the handoff, Crockett, big hole, Crockett all the way down inside the 25 to the 23 yard line. And now you see North Dakota State start to pound ground and push back on that Weber State defense. That was a thing of beauty. And once again, we've said it. This is their bread and butter. Sooner or later, it's going to work with this offensive line, and you've got to play honest, and you have to be disciplined. 17 carries, 81 yards, and a touchdown for Crockett. Right now, Wentz in the shotgun. Play action pass, and a wide open receiver inside the five-yard line. He's going to be called down. Oh, I love this play. Love the movement on the offensive line and the play action. Weber State had no idea on that one. Great play action. <laughs> yeah, Shay DeJong, the defensive back playing on the offensive side of the football. North Dakota State with the first and goal. Crockett. Up the middle, dives in. 
So you had Darius Anderson yeah, Darius first Anderson. with that catch. And then trying to pound it in right there. But once again, that, the movement from the guard on that pass play and the play action really set that up. Weaver stayed a little confused. Safety couldn't get over to make the play, and that's setting up an opportunity for the Bison here. Gary Sanderson, the fourth string running back. Fourth string. Oh, they like him. Though. King Fraser, we've not seen King Fraser tonight. Right. Second back through. Guess who? 22 on the carry. King Fraser. I just talked about him. Hadn't seen him all night long. King gets a break at the one yard line and comes out. Crockett gets him down there. And King Fraser, who they're very excited about. Gets in for the score. All right, we talk about the FBS transfers to Weber State. How about North Dakota State? The transfer from Nebraska and the Cornhuskers gets in right after Todd calls his name. Well, talk about the Cornhuskers. They barely survived today. McNeese State. McNeese had a great opportunity to win that game. It's a big time kicker, Adam Keller. Had off-season hip surgery, set a school record for PATs made with 76. They didn't have a lot of communication with him in the summer. He had an internship in Texas, so they had a couple phone calls, maybe a couple photos of him practicing down in Texas, but she is so instrumental to the success of this team, North Dakota State. And last week, Coach Kleiman told his punter and his kickers, hey, look, we're expecting you to play big. We need you to do your job and do it well. You know, it's not a bad night's work. One carry for one yard and one touchdown. <laughs> that, is, that is a great <laughs> night, especially when you're going for 26 straight victories. And, you know, two straight road games. You know, it would be easy to have a letdown after that Iowa State victory. Get back on a plane from Fargo and fly to Salt Lake City. Night game here, sit in the hotel room, but looks like the intensity is back and the focus is back. And they've been, you know, coaching staff definitely wor worried about complacency. I don't know if that's been the issue tonight in the first half, but North Dakota State is back. Well, just 2.03 to get that score, and this one is going to be a return. Bo Bolin reels it in up to the 20, and Man, runs into an absolute wall by North Dakota State right at the 21-yard line, and that's where Weber State will start this drive. And now you're down two scores. You've been in this game, you've played well. You're battling adversity here because that left tackle has been such a problem, Blake. I don't know if they can roll Green out, try to get to the other side of the field, Blake. Or they may have what they to. can do. They'd like to be able to run the ball, so they have some threat of running the ball. By the way, that hit from MJ Stump from Harvey, North Dakota. Harvey is one of the great, one of the great former NDSU head coaches. Rocky Hager grew up on a ranch outside of Harvey. Big time special teams play. North Dakota State's defense now just getting off the ball and Weber State, I think forced a little bit uh, to change their game plan with that left tackle going out. But right now, it doesn't matter how you execute with North Dakota State is around the football. And, and we talked to head coach Jay Hill, Blake, and this is, you know, we're not coding it here. I'll tell you what, the Bison looked every bit as good as some of the top 25 teams in the country last oh, as week. As far as I'm concerned, they are a top 25 team. They've proven that year in, year out. Second down and long. Watch that left tackle position. I don't know if that was a drop pass or if Jake Kahawai was just not looking or if it was tipped. No, Travis Beck, just a I great football player. I don't think he was even looking, See what this. Yeah, he wasn't even looking. It was, it was both. Well, Beck was made a great play. Good defensive play by Beck. Yeah. Bats it down. Didn't matter if he was looking or not. That ball wasn't getting to him. And you know what? And I think that's a product, Blake, of that throw may have not been there. But Green's got to make some decisions because he know he doesn't have much time back there in the pocket. Third and ten, another long situation. This is a desperate time for Weaver State. Down two scores. Across the middle and a huge play up to the 35-yard line and a first down 
Kamana Kamiakawa reels it in. We were told he was not going to play, that he was out. That's his second reception. Well, that's a huge play by Green because he felt the heat coming once again from that left side and let go of the ball when he had to. I can't say well enough about play. Billy Green right now. Standing in the pocket because he knows he's going to get hit right. every time he throws the football. Weaver State will stay with the pass. Five wide receiver set. Fresh set of downs. Bit, buck 53 left. Going across the middle. Quejano down to the 45 40. Wrestled down at the 37 38 yard line. Another first down for the Wildcats. Man. How about Green, though? Once again, great catch, great play, but you said it. And Green kind of rolling to his left a little bit, shifting his feet, kind of scooting over to the left, and that's where the pressure was coming and a completion. But, man, they have to have some serious confidence right now with Green at the helm. Kehano, seven receptions, 79 yards, gain of 29 on that. Again, the five wide receiver set, Green. With time, that one just behind, just behind Corpus, number 15. Corpus slanting in, yep. quick hitter, it's a bang-bang play, unable to make the catch. Second and 10 from the 36. Well, it's fun to watch Emmanuel on that left side, though, trying to get to the quarterback, and Green letting it go right when he has to. Emmanuel is just licking his chops every play. Trips up top, there's your total yardage. 301 for North Dakota State. Weaver managing 231. Green going, he's got Livingston. That's another first down right at the 21 yard line. And the Wildcat faithful up. And this is a huge drive coming on the heels of that touchdown. How about this ball from Green? And a Livingston, great concentration. Coming back to his good coverage. Draw play. Bowling. Bowling, look at him, holding on to that football and a nine yard carry, perhaps close to a first down. I'm gonna say it's second and a half yard. The old wise man on this team, getting the carry here, getting his opportunity. North Dakota State probably not expecting, missed tackle right there. Probably not expecting Bowling to get the ball. You said it early in this game, he's gotta take advantage of opportunities. Green, this one into the flat. Comeback route to the 10 yard line. Kamana Kamiakawa with his third reception of the night. And it should be a first down. Absolutely moves the chains and a first down. Weaver State really effective. Impressive. Quick snap green going to the air. Goes across the middle. And he is throwing darts right now. Kamana Yakawa again, his fourth reception on the night. I, I cannot say enough about Green right now. His composure as Jay Hill looks on. Now this is really impressive against the number one team in the nation. Time ticking down here. And I'll tell you, you got to keep in the back of your mind, as well as Weaver State is playing, they burn two of their timeouts. They've got one left. We get ready for the fourth quarter. We'll talk about how dominant the Bison have been in the fourth quarter. When we come back, they've been an absolute machine. Right now, Weaver State in this football game. It's 21-7, and the Cats, well, they're on the move. Welcome back to Stewart Stadium in Ogden, Utah, where head coach Jay Hill's Weaver State Wildcats are on the move. They're down 21-7, facing a second and five. From just outside the five yard line. Play action, Green going up top, and that one tipped and incomplete prior to that pass. Green had been five of six for 65 yards. Travis Beck with that tip. Oh, Beck, once again. <laughs> I, I am just amazed that he's playing football after the surgery three weeks ago and at the level that he plays. Hands up, great anticipation. Huge play for Weaver State. Three of 12 on third down. And this is a big one. Oh, the ball was there. They're and a great, it. great Absolutely. They're called placement. the interference. Let's watch this again because that's going to give Weaver State a first and goal at the one yard line. It happened in the end zone. And I'll tell you, Jordan Champion may have a case here. 
I think Weber State pushed off every bit as much as he did. I want to see this on replay, Blake. Is obviously up here in the booth. They threw to the other side of the field. Let's take a look at it. Champion on the coverage. Nah, that's a good, good call. call. That's, that's a good a call. Very good call. Livingston and Green knew he, he may have a mismatch over there. Great job by Livingston, 6'2", 195 pounds. Extremely athletic. Seven. Seven Bison penalties. Now can Weaver State take advantage? They were inside the five-yard line against Arizona State and couldn't quite get in. And you see that Bison defense getting tough. That's one and yard. Wilkes. Wilkes trying to get in. We saw him with his first career touchdown from 27 yards. So here we go with the offensive line. Manning up here against these Bison. This is how you win championships right here. Remember, their left tackle, starting left tackle, out of the game. 12th play of this drive, and there's going to be a 13th. Huge play by the Bison. And Colton Hegel coming up big as he's done his entire career from Appleton, Wisconsin. Look at the speed and the pursuit. You just got to drive hard and go north and south. I, I think you got two plays, Blake, and you've got to go to the end zone both plays. If you don't get in third, I think you got to go for it. You've had problems at left tackle. You're not going to get these opportunities much. Third down. Wilkes hops the defense. The pursuit is just too much. You cannot run wide on North Dakota State right now. They're getting the penetration. And again, the left-hand side of the line for Weber State is unable to hold the blocks. And Wilkes sliced down in the backfield. Another great athlete from Omaha. Playing for these Bison, Nick DeLuca, the sophomore. As you mentioned, great speed, physical pursuit, tenacity. Josh Kialamakia on the fake. Kialamakia is not going to get there. It was well designed, and he just couldn't get the outside. Kialamakia cut down at the one-yard line. It was designed brilliantly, but just didn't have that extra gear. Wow, look at this. And how about Little John? One of the greatest players in FCS and just making a big play. Coach Klein, how about that? A little snap through the legs. Was not fooled. Little John. Cody McKaig kind of delayed a little bit on the block. Watch McKaig right here. He, he couldn't not quite fooled. get the speed. I think that's a tough play. It was designed brilliantly. There was room out there, Blake. It was a fake field goal, and Little John was not faked. Little John did a tremendous great job angle, there. Great angle, great pursuit. Yep. End of story. McKeg didn't have anybody to block. Little John was too quick. Wow. North Dakota State busted up. Look at Crockett. Up to the 15 to the 16-yard line. Out of the shadow of their own end zone. First down, North Dakota State. Now, I, I, just before that field goal attempt, I was pouring over something, Blake. How about pour over that? How about the offensive line and the fullbacks just beating everyone else? up on the front line and the defensive line and the second level with the linebackers. Crockett just went over the century mark. 19 carries for 103 yards and a touchdown. Boy, I can't say enough about this Weaver State defense, though. On first down, the Bison go for a yard. But let me tell you something. There was a fake field goal there. Weaver State didn't score. That's not strange if you're a North Dakota State opponent. 13 of their last 15 opponents held scoreless in the fourth quarter. That's last Incredible. year. 16 points they've given up in 21 games. And that may have been points. the most impressive goal line, goal line stand right there. 16 points in 21 games in the fourth quarter. Absolutely astounding. Second and eight. Play action, Wentz rolling. Weaver State had that design, but a great move by Wentz. And he's just going to kind of get rid of this, but he gets it up there for a five-yard gain. No, it's incomplete. R.J. Erzendowski drops the rock. Says he didn't have possession. He was out of bounds. Nice job by the Wildcats. North Dakota State stretching it out. They kept the pursuit, and they cannot give up at this point. 
They can't, I mean, I know their will was just crushed right there. They're knocking on the door, but there's so much time left in this football game. The Wildcats have been up against the ropes a couple times in this game, Blake. Big they've been down. able to battle away and battle off the ropes. And this third down, key, key to this game. Disguising a blitz. And I think the offensive line move, that's going to be a legal procedure. False start. And that left side. Wildcats pointing to the left side. But, you know, I'll tell you, Blake, the one thing that you have to look at, if you're, if you're, a North Dakota State fan. Yep. Yeah, Barely you know what? Moves right there. He had Andrew one last Bonnet. week. Andrew Bonnet. Andrew Andrew Bonnet had one last week as well against against Iowa State. But the one thing that you've got to look forward to as a Bison fan is is Winston's mobility out of the pocket, Blake. Eighth penalty for 66 yards. Huge third down. Third and 13. Crockett up the middle, they just go back to it, get up to the 20 yard line, got a little room to kick here, and Weaver State wow. holds again. They have to feel really good about themselves right there. And this crowd should be on their feet right now. That's a huge victory, and Florence knows it as he runs off the field. Great win for the defense. Boy, would it be nice for Weaver State to get Shaden Kehano loose here. 11.08 to play in the fourth. Kehano is going to have a chance to return this to 35. Oh, cut down to the 40, and it's a good thing that he was because he had 20 yards of field in front of him and a tremendous special teams play by Zach Colvin, number seven. Wow, tremendous stuff. 11 minutes to play. It's 21-7. Bison. Stage 21-7. And the reason it stayed 21-7 is this Bison defense, which was just angry, getting after it. Then the fake field goal, and Josh Kialamakia takes it, can't quite get there. Little John, great pursuit, and the Bison hold. And right now, Weaver State with an important possession with 11 minutes to play, 21-7 in favor of the Bison. Green getting some time and going deep. He's going for Livingston, but this one overthrown. Not a chance. Stretched him out a little bit here. Just overthrew it. North Dakota State, nice job. By the way, North Dakota State, if you didn't know, they, they won eight national championships in Division II be, before they became a Division I program. And obviously going for their fourth straight in FCS. So you're saying there's a lot of hardware there. Uh, they were one of the best, if not the best Division II programs in the country. Past 30 years, 40 years. Great cutback. Weber State finds the opening, a little bit of speed, and it's been Wilkes, smooth as silk, cruises across the 47-yard line to the 48, and that's a first down, moving the chains for the Wildcats. And limping a little bit is Esley Thornton. The Sam, the linebacker, number nine. Keep an eye on him. Green into the flat, Kehano. I believe that's his ninth catch or close to it. Yep, Dudzik, great speed and pursuit. Big time play, but nice job by Green and the Wildcats. Our stats man, John Casper, has just told us that's his eighth catch. Kehano having a great start to the year at 99 yards and six. That one was deflected. Absolutely. And it was set up beautifully because Livingston was open. Emmanuel. One of the best in the country, gets his hand up. They've had two or three of those tonight, but Emmanuel is such a great athlete. We talk about all the things that the Bison have done, Blake. They have not won back-to-back -back road games since 1983. How about that? Twins up top, twins below, green. And into the slot as they come on Kami Akawa, he drops this one. Well, he gets hit. A great defensive play by Jordan Champion right there. We'd like to make up for one of those plays earlier in the game. 5'9", 187, comes up with speed, toughness, the junior. 
Well, just because he got hit doesn't mean he can't drop it. He got hit <laughs> and he dropped it. It's a good, good thing if you drop it, don't get hit. <laughs> North Dakota State can, can come after it. Great job, and look at this punt. Fair catch right at the 11-yard line. A little thunder from down under. 10.01 to play. 21-7, North Dakota State hanging tough. Football program. First and ten starting out at the 11 yard line. We go back to the run. And boy, good great pursuit. job just getting back to the line of scrimmage on that one for yeah. Crockett. Good effort by Crockett, good pursuit by the Wildcats. And Coach Hill telling his team, making sure they know the hay is never in the barn. The work is never done for them. Preaching that to the Wildcats this week. He has a lot of faith in this team. Under 10 minutes to play, 9.40 left in the fourth quarter. North Dakota State, workmanlike. It's kind of what they do until they hit big plays like that, gain a nine That's yards killer. and a first down. That is killer right there. That'll take your will away if you're a defensive lineman. Oh my goodness. Up front, and just some manhandling going on. Well, we talked Jeremy about Kelly, one of those offensive linemen, 6'6", 286 pounds, doing his job. Joe Haig is the, is the only returner on that offensive line. He's 6'6", 300 pounds, doing a nice job. And left tackle. First and 10. 21st downs for North Dakota State, 17 for Weaver. The Wildcats have done a great job staying in this game, but it's not what Jay Hill wants to do, is just stay in the game. They want to come up with some victories. And well, they just did there. Morlock stopped for just a one-yard game. This team gave up defensively, Blake. This is how far they've come. Last year, they gave up 70 twice. Right. No, it, it is amazing, the turnaround. I mean, th this is a good football team. And they're gonna, I think they're gonna give a lot of teams in the Big Sky Conference some problems this year. And they should feel good about that. They came back with a big defensive stop right there. Second down, eight yards to go. Bison, gotta pick their poison here. They keep it on the ground. The Weber State defense converges. This could be about a third, third and four. This is what North Dakota State does so well, taking time off the clock, the offensive line, those seven offensive linemen, Jack Plankers and Austin Cooner rotating in, Jesse Hines, the center, Landon Leckler, 6'7", 300 pounds, right tackle, doing a great job, along with Schuler, Hegg, and Kelly. Well, Weaver State's gonna make this a ball game in the last couple minutes. They've gotta come up with a stop here. Under 7.40 to play. Wins down the bottom of your screen, wide receiver up top. Wentz in the shotgun formation, has time, goes to the sidelines at a back shoulder throw, and they're gonna throw the flag on it. And they didn't mean to put his hands. Zach Braw, he's been quiet tonight, but he draws the penalty there. Well, that came out late, Todd, on Florence. And this interference call could be devastating to Weber State. It's on Florence. Here's a second look at it. Right there. Oh, yeah. He right held there. him so he couldn't go back. It was a back shoulder design throw, Blake. Held him so he couldn't get back. Good call. Why, the longest winning streak in the nation, North Dakota State. They're showing the reason why. Because it comes down to the fourth quarter, they just continue to get it done. Now it's time for seer time. The fullback. Blocking Boom. up front. Five yards, just methodically down the field, imposing their will. And that's how they've defeated Kansas, Minnesota, Colorado State, Kansas State, Iowa State. The past five years on the road, 
in front of these big crowds against FBS opponents, just pounding the ball, taking time off the clock, creating big plays on defense. And this is what they do best. 6.51 to play. Two wide receivers at the bottom of your screen. Carson Wentz recovered from two interceptions. He had a solid game. He's been helped by the run game. Weaver State has been in position to have a one-score game. There's a flag coming in late here and a personal foul. That's my guess. Yeah, frustration mounting on the Weaver State sideline. Third and a five. That would have been a third and five for North Dakota State. And he's asking his players right now, what have we learned from our mistakes? Can't we learn from those mental mistakes that have really hurt us tonight? Trayvon Johnson is just getting an earful right now, Blake. And you can't, you can't do that. You cannot do that against any team, let alone the best in the country. There will be growing pains for Weber State, but it's all about learning right now and trying to come up with a big play here and a big defensive stand. Uh, Coach Jay Hill right now out of his mind on that call because his team had forced North Dakota State into a third and five and a chance to stop him. And the clock right now becoming the enemy with less than, uh, that's now 6.15 to go and a 21-7 lead for North Dakota State. Bison, continue to roll. Crockett, up the middle, another five yards. You know, defensive coordinator Justin Anna the new defensive coordinator here at Weber State has to feel pretty good, though, about some great things that this defense has done. Obviously, this game is not over yet, but they have done some really, really good things to build off of for the rest of the regular season and into the Big Sky Conference play. Anna, the former BYU star and NFL player. Southern Utah, most recently along with the offensive coordinator, Steve Clark. Thunderbirds, right? There you go. Good program. Second down, six yards to go. Flag's going to fly here. May have been too much time, Blake. Ball start. Yep. You know, that was one of the things that North Dakota State was concerned about. The two new coordinators and on offense and, and defense. They went back and looked at uh, Southern Utah tape. And obviously the game against <coughs> Arizona State because some new wrinkles and some new things that they probably hadn't seen from Weber State from last year with the new coaching staff. 21-7, Bison. Time ticking down, almost to the five minute mark. Big hit right there. Yeah, big hit, gain of Yard, yard and a half. Got to keep on playing. And this coaching staff encouraging this defense and all these Wildcats. Play to the final gun. Play hard. You know what the scary thing is, Blake? The Bison haven't been terrific tonight. When this team is terrific, how scary are they? They've had a couple interceptions, you know, early in the season, but that's how good they are. Wentz getting great protection, terrific protection, goes over the middle and goes to one of his tight ends, Kevin Bodlin, reels it in at the 28-yard line in a key situation on third down. Once again, the Bison find a way to get it done. Well, Vodlin, one of the best tight ends ever in North Dakota State history. Talked about him uh, being in his sixth season. Big play right here. Great pass. Great vision. Wentz. Tenth play of the drive. We have a Wildcat player down. We'll clean that up when we come back. 4-17 left in this one. Number one team in the country. Looking like number one. Well, welcome back to Stewart Stadium, Ogden, Utah, where the Weaver State Wildcats have put everything on the line tonight to take on the number one team with a 25 game win streak in FCS, as well as beating five Division I opponents as well. Todd, when Craig Bull took the job in Wyoming, he took, as you mentioned, all of his coaches to Laramie. And they had to hire 
An offensive coordinator, of course, and Tim Polisek, offensive coordinator and running backs coach, came back to Fargo from Northern Illinois, and the players were thrilled when they heard that, no that news. So Polisek has to be happy tonight, going 2-0 here early in the season with his new old team. First and 10. North Dakota State now just three minutes and 39 seconds away from their 26 victory. Crockett pounds it up the middle to the 25 yard line. It's 25th carry of the night, right around 120 yards, as well as a touchdown. Yep. He had three last week. They also had to bring in a, a quarterback coach for Wentz, and Randy Hedberg saw him before the game tonight. Happy to be back. I know he has family in North Dakota and knows all about the Western Minnesota region for recruiting. That is huge, and I know Wentz is happy that Hedberg is on this staff. Second down, seven yards to go. Now under three minutes. Carson Wentz, hands off Crockett. Just getting stronger to the 22-yard line. Let's take a look at what the Bison have left. They've done a lot of their tough work. They have lifting early. They go on the road beat the Cyclones of Iowa State, who, by the way, had Kansas State on the ropes tonight. Incarnate Word. San Antonio. San Antonio. Montana. Right Western by Illinois. Alamo Stadium. Southern Illinois. Indiana State. So winnable games. Who on that schedule is going to pose the problem? They finished with Youngstown State. Northern Iowa. What? Who's going to pose Mon the problem? Montana may give them yeah. a challenge, but it's at Fargo to them. Tough place to try to pick up a victory, that's for sure. Well, Fargo Dome, Todd, is amazing. It's a lot like Indianapolis used to be. When you go in there, you could hear a pin drop when the offense, and you probably still can when the offense is on the field. But those North Dakota State fans are such great fans. And the noise comes when they are on defense. It's one of the noisiest. It may be as noisy as Seattle, but what a great home field advantage for the Bison. Well, I'll tell you, Weber State has got to be proud of the effort they put forth tonight. They've got players from 13 different states, Blake. They have a lot from Utah, there's no doubt. 13 states, three countries, including Australia, we outlined that, mm -hmm. all four time zones, Utah, California, Florida, and Idaho. But guess what? All those time zones combined and everything still may not be quite enough to knock off the best team in the land. The toe comes in, 17, Keller. Placement down, kick is up, and it's good. 24-7 in favor of North Dakota State. You talk about recruiting, how about North Dakota State? You know, they go all over the snow belt trying to find the best players, physical players, high character players, student athletes. They may be an inch shorter, maybe a couple pounds lighter, but they bring it. May have a little chip on their shoulder that they're not playing FBS football. But you know what, they'll also go to Florida to get their defensive backs. Now even though they recruit Florida, get some great athletes, you would think, you would think the player from Beach would be from Florida. But that is not the case. <laughs> Beach, North Dakota, Landon Leckler, 6'7", 300 pounds, number 78 for North Dakota State. Nine-man football, last I heard. You know, back in the 30s, Vern Oach. You know, contrary from to popular Beach, belief. From Beach, hold on, from Beach, North Dakota, Vern Oach, okay, played for the Chicago Bears. So that means if Leckler finds his way into the NFL, you would have two NFL offensive linemen from Beach. Population 1,000 people, Western North Dakota. How about that? I thought you were kind of looking at me like I should know him from 1930. I'm not that old. That was a 13 play, 67 yard ride, Blake, and they ate up 8.02 of the clock. <laughs> Well, the ball come out to the 25. I think Weber State, when you look back at this game, Blake, a minute 59 to go, and unfortunately, you're going to be sitting here saying, what if? 
because they had tremendous opportunity. And it, the good thing is Jay Hill's got some things on tape, and, and he told us when we talked to him this week, you can't lie to the kids. Look, it's a long season. This is a non-conference game. They're going to learn a lot from this, and I would not want to play Weber State in the FCS playoffs, that's for sure. Billy Green, solid night, quick hitter over the middle, up to the 35, 36 yard line. Kamana Kamiakawa, where a guy that wasn't gonna play, he's done pretty well. He sure has. This is a good football team. Weber State has the administration, the support surrounding this football team that had so much success over the years, trying to get back to that. And they'll find it with Jay Hill. You gotta love this if you're a Bison football fan. You know, you've had such a great run with Craig Bull, and you come in, Chris Kleiman, just continues the ship pointing in the right direction. Big time win over Iowa State, comes back here, comes to Weber, you know that you got a target on your back. New coaching staff, you just go out and win. Another one of those coaches, Matt Entz, defensive coordinator from the same hometown as Kleiman. He hires him in the offseason Paid his dues in Northern Iowa, Western Illinois, climbing a Northern Iowa guy, a former defensive back. So you talk about an emotional victory last week at Iowa State. He grew up in the area, had his dad, his brother, his two boys on the field after that big victory, five straight against the FBS teams last week. Kehana with his ninth reception on the evening, and Weaver State not going quietly into the night. It's out of the reach now, but get some yards, you get some confidence, you get some play calling, work on your hurry up offense. That's why they're doing this. Bo Bolin over the middle. Now, I can't say enough, though, about North Dakota State and Jim Kramer, their strength and conditioning coach. It is vital in a football program. And we did not see any cramps from North Dakota State last week against Iowa State. You can see the strength and the endurance here on this field. They fly around, they bring it. And that's one of the keys, as we mentioned earlier, to North Dakota State continuing their dominance, not only in FCS, but when they play FBS teams. Kamani Ikawa with another reception for Weber State. Second down, five yards to go. Under a minute to play now. Weber State with a game effort, but I'll tell you, one thing that kind of changed the momentum of this football game as we see Green go down was the left tackle. Wilcox going out. A.J. Wilcox goes out. It kind of changed things, not only for Green, but the entire offense, Blake. Uh, I think so, and, and they did a nice job, but once again, North Dakota State is going to bring the heat no matter who's playing left tackle. So give them credit for getting back to what they do best, running the football, establishing the run, and bringing the toughness in that second half as Ambrosius is up and walking off the field. Once again, that sophomore from Wisconsin. 244 pounds. Those guys just fly around. Well, North Dakota State can beat you in a variety of ways, and as, as well as Weber State played, I thought the Bison defense were, were tremendous. They've given up one score. They've risen to the occasion every time they've had to, Blake. They faced face field goals, reverses, just about everything, and you punctuated here on third and 10, and there's a sack. Well, how good will it feel getting on this plane and heading back to Fargo after this one, knowing that have a home game Incarnate Word, San Antonio. Well, the fourth down pass incomplete a little bit behind Kamani Akawa and the North Dakota State Bison will win their 26th straight. Listen, it just is another week, another victory. They're used to winning. But what's amazing about it is how they continue to work. We talked with some of the assistants, Blake, mm -hmm. on how hard, and he's, and he's one of the new assistants. They said, listen, I, I've never seen a team work so hard and be as focused at this level as the Bison football players It's all are. about the double reps in Fargo at North Dakota State. 
I don't think there's any college football team that works harder than these guys. And Jay Hill's gonna do the same thing here at Weber State. Well, you just saw a quick shot of Jay Hill and you saw disappointment and exasperation. And I can tell you one thing, that when he goes to the film room, Blake, that he's gonna point out, there were a couple personal fouls, dead ball fouls, that really cost his football team and you just can't have. We heard him scream, what have you learned? Well, he learned tonight that his football team can play, and he's got a quarterback that's pretty darn good. Right. Guess what? Not quite as good as the three-time defending champs who come into Weber State and pick up a 24-7 victory. Two class acts right there, and two former cornerbacks, by the way, Hill at the University of Utah and Kleiman at Northern Iowa cornerback. And uh, I know his wife and son, a high school football player in Fargo, happy to watch this tonight and excited, unable to make the trip because his son had a football game. Well, you got a football, that's a good reason to miss the trip. Well, pleasantries exchanged at midfield. Weber State put up a heck of a fight. We'll recap this a bit, 24-7 the final in favor of the Bison. Welcome back. Stewart Stadium, Ogden, Utah. The final count, North Dakota State comes in and takes care of a game. Weber State team 24-7. Let's take a look at how this thing went down. North Dakota State gets things rolling. John Crockett on the ground. Yeah, I think he got in, but guess what? On the next play, he did get in. Gets a touchdown from a yard out. North Dakota State, first to draw blood. It's seven zip Bison. Well, they got a freshman here that can run pretty well, and Eric Smooth as Wilkes gets in for his first career touchdown. 27 yards. We're tied up at 7-7. Seven, seven. Well, hey, yeah, here's the pressure from, from uh, the Bison and Little John making a big play right there. A just hard-nosed defense. Big block by Esley Thornton. Yeah, Colin Fackrell couldn't get that up, but you take a look at what they can do. And we, Weber State just didn't have enough personnel at the end of it. King Frazier goes over there for the Bison 24-7. Look at the rushing yards. It was close at halftime, but that's the difference in the game for the Bison. They rolled up 177 yards and 192 passing. Balance will kill you despite the tier two turnovers. And Carson will learn. Yeah, it starts with rushing yards with North Dakota State, as you mentioned, and then they were able to pass the ball after they established that run. It's just physical defense, grounded, pounded, create turnovers and create uh, problems, if possible, uh, by the defense against the offense from Weaver State. Well, let's take a look at our player of the game. You saw him break loose for three touchdowns last week against Iowa State. And again, John Crockett sets the tone for this team. He caught the ball. He ran the football. You see him cut on a dime. He's durable. He pretty much does it all. I mean, if he doesn't get five yards, you're wondering what happened. Yeah, and you know what I like? There's so much zone read, obviously, in college football this day and age. It's fun to watch a pro set style team like North Dakota State. Just physical football, same with uh, Weaver State with their West Coast offense, but it's kind of fun, change of pace. We didn't see 350 zone reads in one night, so I enjoyed that. Well, what we did see was the Bison of North Dakota State pocketing another victory. If you're counting, that's number 26.